Coming to you from the award-winning Final Third Cigar and Whiskey Lounge, PCA's 2024 Best of Leaf Midwest Cigar Bar, Indiana's exclusive Aladino Cigar Lounge, it's the Final Third Podcast. Welcome back to the Final Third Podcast. I'm Rob. I'm Mike. And today we have a couple special guests. We have Garrett Lynette and we have Dan Kidd. Um, Garrett is, we're getting ready to do a pick that Garrett, I believe, set up, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll talk about that today a little bit. And then Dan likes to chug bourbon. Yeah, I like to <laughs> like to drink and smoke. He likes to and drink and smoke. We all like to do that. So we're in good company today. So yeah. we're going to chat about all these things and get into a couple of special pours. And we're also going to be smoking the Crux Guild today. Um, cigar we've had for a little while, but you know what? I haven't been back to some of the Crux um, lately. I and I thought, you know what? Let's get back to something we really enjoyed. So we're going to smoke that today. Guild's probably, I think the Bull and Bear is actually probably my favorite. Me too, just because it's full body. Yeah, yeah, it's more full body than this one. Um, but this one has some some really good, really good qualities to it too. So... So what do you, Gary, you are you straight, a, don't go, a big don't cigar go smoker? You make yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I frequent here pretty, pretty good. Uh, yeah, I know. We hang out. What is, what is your profile like then with cigars? Uh, it really kind of depends on the day. I think uh, if I come in, sometimes I'm searching for something oh, a little bit more mellow and blonde, and sometimes uh, find myself wanting to get my hands on, you know, a Camacho pre-embargo or something like go. that, you know, yeah. different flavor for a different kind of a day. Okay. Nice. Shoot, I should have brought those out today. Uh, v on one side, straight on the other. Just don't go too deep. Yeah, don't go too deep on that straight. Yeah. I'll push it all the way in. <laughs> oh, yeah, you weren't kidding. It's beautiful. Oh, the V's all good. No, it's perfect. Yeah, the V's perfect. I always go V. I always go V. Once you go V, you won't go back. <laughs> so, this, uh, Howard's running around here. He's uh he's a good boy. We brought Howard with us today. He's having a good day. The cigar looks a good like day. Pac-Man right now. <laughs> yes, yes. So let's jump into the let's just jump in. Let's jump right in. So um today we're actually recording the day after the uh the sh- the shooting on former president Donald Trump. <clears throat> and um you know I've I've heard a lot of people have come together on this. And I'm glad to see that people are not taking this as a political thing, but there's still people out there, you know, running their mouths. Like bottom line is I don't care if you're far right, far left, somewhere in the middle, this shit needs to stop. It's just getting stupid that we feel like in this country that our candidates, not the candidate winning. So we need to shoot the other guy. I mean, come on, man. It's just getting stupid. So, I mean, we're not going to talk politics. We usually don't, but it's just one of those things that, that happen, you know, so but, glad, so glad he didn't, you know, didn't yeah. die in the shooting. But you know, there was two people that did die: the shooter and and a bystander. So yeah. we need to make insane. America drunk again. That's drink, right. drink more, and people will be a lot happier. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Let's uh, let's except let's, for the bankrupt people. <laughs> let's bring the country together. You know, yeah. Demo- Democrat, yes. Republican, you know, liberal, whatever. Oh. I don't, I don't care what you are. So no. did you see either. the original video of like when it happened? Did you hear the audio from that? Yeah. It's my favorite thing ever. Not that it happened. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I know what you're talking he, about. Yeah. So he goes down, and the Secret Service jump on top of him, try to pick him up to get him off stage, and all you hear is, I need my shoe! I need my shoe! Yeah, one of his shoes went off. He wouldn't leave the stage without a shoe. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what kind of loafers they were, but, but they I will were probably say pretty too, nice. In, in tr- typical Trump fashion, although I will say this was pretty quick after getting shot in the ear, he immediately came out and did his normal, you know, we're going to fight. You know, it's like... Come on, you know you got you got to love a guy that does something like that, you know. Or he goes regardless get, of your politics. They go to put him in the car, and he's like standing on the sideboard, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, like we're going special operations. I'm riding on the outside of the car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm just thinking too, man. To it's him. like after taking a shot in the ear, and then not just ducking your way to the car. I'm oh like, yeah, damn. no, he was like he was proud of it. He was very proud of it. Well, yes, good for I'm him that he's still well. 
Yes. Uh, you know, tweeted out that he's fine. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I have some pictures I'll show you guys. Like, we were at breakfast this morning looking at pictures from that yesterday, and there's one where they, like, circled a streak, like, behind his head. And they were like, this was the bullet <laughs> that grazed him. Like, you're full of shit. Yeah. I was like, I have a camera that might be able to do that. I'm sure they do, too, but, like. Probably not. I was a, it's more I, likely that's a UFO than the bullet, right? Like, I was at Indiana Grand last night losing money on slots with my wife, like, like I know only how to do. And I was talking to Kylie about it because she had no idea it had happened. And, of course, you know, the first bystander is an old man walking by, and the first thing he said was, that's, that's fake. It was made up. Well, yeah. Like, really? Bottom line is, if that was fake, then what the hell happened to this poor bystander at the dig? You know what I'm saying? If it was staged, someone died in the staging of this thing, too. It's even worse. It's I think it's stupid. remarkable that nobody else was hurt just because of, yeah. I mean, it was what? It was a total of eight rounds that went off? I don't know. I didn't hear how many it was, rounds. It was about yeah. eight. Have you seen the memes that have come out of this, though? I we'll talk even... some memes and then we'll move on. <laughs> All right, go there ahead. was one in particular that stood out from, I'm not going to say this guy's name. Uh, quote Stormy Daniels. Now we've both been yeah. shot in the face. Yeah, I did see that one. I did see that one. <laughs> wow. It's like, so, wow. okay, that was way too soon. Way too, way too soon. Way too I thought, soon. I thought that the the summit of those was just going to be things about like 50 Cent and saying, you know, like. That was oh, a good one. You know, I saw like, one of those. All of those about getting shot and walking away from it or whatever. But yeah. Yeah, that, that tops it. The shooters yeah. got Bronny James stats going one for eight from the field. There, there you go. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So any way All that right. we can bring the country together to uh, make Bronny James feel worse about his game was uh, it's a good. <laughs> it's true. It's a good time. I it guess. It does so. seem like every media is doing that right now, aren't they? Yeah. It's like you know. Okay. As a dad, if I've got a son and he's a good ball player, good enough to actually get drafted in the NBA eventually, wouldn't that be freaking amazing to be able to win a championship with your kid? Right. I'm kind of rooting for that, even though I don't like LeBron James. But, man, it seems like the country's like, screw that shit. We don't want Bronny to do anything. <laughs> I don't I don't get it because when you look at the roster and the lineup, where is he going to fit in to exactly. actually play with his dad? So he's just – I mean, he's where he's going to fit in when LeBron goes to the bench and say, Coach, put my son in. Yeah. That's when he gets in. <laughs> oh, you mean their new coach, J.J. Redick, who's in his pocket anyways? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, anyways, we need liquor because it liquor. is afternoon. So we do have a couple from you. We'll also get into, if we have time later on, we've got the new Whiskey Acre 7 year that just came out. So tell us about your bottles. All right, these are uh, MGP. It's a 5.9, almost a 6 year by the time they were barreled. Um, this is the Chugs 4.0 release. Um, we had the option between 10 different barrels, which was a blast because I showed up a little drunk already. Um, <laughs> so tasting through 10 barrels was quite the task someone had to do it so i did it <laughs> it's um, a job. but yeah so it's the it's, it's a the, tough job it's the latest probably the last uh last of the chugs that i'll do um it's been fun but chugging whiskey's hard yeah it's hard work yeah. yeah well we've we've said it on here before and i know you said this before too is like you know you kind of got a massive following yeah and a lot of it came because you were doing the chug videos do a lot and you do a lot of content you yeah. do a great job of content but Pretty sure it would have been much better if you didn't have to chug to get those following right. <laughs> and it, it, it almost becomes like I'm a you know I'm a I'm a sideshow at a party. Just yeah, like, hey, hey, do that chug thing. Do that chug thing. Do that chug. Yeah, man. yeah. Man, dance right. monkey. Which I'm, one do you want to start with, pink or blue? Let's go. Uh, let's go blue. Blue. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's a little uh, bit more color. I think the uh, the other one nice. tastes a little bit better. So talking about that fame, Dan, yeah. uh, can you tell us some of the more memorable people you've met due to your whiskey stardom? Yeah, that's been pretty cool. Um, just, I mean, the, the people that I've got to meet. I mean, we were talking about Peerless the other day, so I got to actually J John from Peerless was one of those guys that was like, "Hey, here, I got this. Let's why don't you chug this at this party?" And I'm like, "Man, again, I'm I'm ten drinks in, but all right, might as well." Um, all right, here's the real question: Do yeah. you ever change it up for sweet tea? You tell me. No, I don't. I, I don't because I don't want to get I don't want to get called out for it. Well, I know you saying don't he's pulling a Jim you also, you also pull the the plastic well, it, off that, a lot of times. So, well, so I, I I used to get called for that. They're like, oh, that's not real or whatever. And so then I'd pull the plastic off and then yeah, you know, do an actual fresh pop and damn, um, and then the chug and then it's like you know, what can you say? You know, I did that a few times with some of those Booker's bottles. You know, I'm struggling with the wax. Yeah, and there's no cuts. So yeah, you tell me. Um, wow. Yeah, so I don't know. You know, we've got the, the you know the Carters, um, a lot of people from Buffalo Trace. Uh, it was funny. One of the last 
it was a couple years ago. I was on a pick for Buffalo Trace, and uh, I was with some of the guys from St. Omo. Nice. And we're down there, and I'm kind of telling them about this whole, you know, the Chug brand and everything. And they're okay. They, you know, they, they knew me from, you know, doing other things. Yeah. Um, so they're not quite taking me serious. We get in there, and the guy that's on the pick, that's leading the pick, is like, "Hey, that's that Chug guy." And I'm kind of sitting in the back, and they all, you know, all ten heads turn and kind of look at me, and I'm like. I've been trying to tell you guys I'm, I'm doing something in this whiskey business. Yeah, kind of yeah. famous. So I got a little bit more recognition from them, which was that was pretty cool. That is cool. That is cool. So, and it's such a small industry, even though it feels massive. Yeah. That once you know a few people, you kind of almost know everybody. Well, you start getting in those circles, and yep. you start, you know, getting invited to parties, or you know, the last few times I've showed up in Kentucky, it's you know, hey, we just wound up hanging out with these guys, and then they know these guys, and they know these guys, and the next thing you know, it's you know the leaders of the industry you know we're all smoking cigars and drinking bourbon i think last time yeah. i was down there was bernie lovers um mark carter and uh what's the guy that's i forget the guy's name that's doing all the uh the rare character uh pablo oh yeah, um, and, yeah. There, and then there was one other guy from heaven hill um you know we're all down there smoking cigars and it's like man this is i never thought in a million years this would be happening so <laughs> yeah yeah it's pretty awesome yeah that's cool man and we, you know, doing this too, like, I know we don't have quite the following you do, but, uh, you know, we, we feel the same way where we get to meet some cool people and go to distilleries and, mm-hmm. um, you know, make new connections, you know, throughout the community and, 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 the the whiskey community. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool. And, you know, now it, we're to the point to where people are starting to reach out to us yeah. instead of like me contacting them once a week to get them to answer my emails. Yeah. They're like, Hey, uh, we want to send you our stuff. I'm like, okay, there you go. Cool. Hell yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's I, I, I've had more fun. It's just it's more about the community. It's more about meeting the people. Yeah, um, you know, sitting down with them, hearing their story, um, enjoying a pour or nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> having a cigar. That, that is the, that is the lead. It's one to nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and that that is the best part of this. You know, yeah, liquor's always great. You know, it's it's fun to try different things, but the people and building mm-hmm. community and expanding our friend groups. Is, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And that's kind of what this is really all about. I mean, you're probably not going to be sitting at home by yourself in your back room, chugging bourbon. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> you might for with a, your phone on you a might tripod. for a little while, maybe for a video. You still got this. My you girl, still got this. Girlfriend comes in. What are you doing back there? Uh, just no, chugging bourbon. No, Nothing. Just Did I just it. hear don't, you cork a bottle? No, no, she didn't want you to be chugging. Where you go? Nope. Just back your masturbating. Just honey, back it's right. fine. <laughs> no, 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 no bourbon. No bourbon. It's, no bourbon, it's bourbon. porn. I swear. <laughs> you met some famous people though, right? Like you got to meet Scott. Scotty Pippen. And... Oh yeah, yeah, oh, I got, that's cool. I got to chug with Scotty Pippen. We were talking about Fifty Cent earlier. I got to chug. Uh, I got to chug Fifty Cent's uh, tequila, uh, little uh, cognac. Brand, oh, oh, cognac. Brand. Yeah. Well. Or cognac. He patted my belly. Um, <laughs> man, I, I I was trying to come up with a perfect tagline, and it was there the whole time. Get drunk or die trying. And I, and it just it, it, it <laughs> just eluded away, me. Huh? Yeah. He just said, "Yeah, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah." So okay. MGP, MGP, almost a six year, five year on the. And label. what's the uh, what's the mash bill on this one? Is this That's their, a good question, man. Okay, you don't after, know. Okay. T- after ten of them, I I, I got you. All, all the other it's ones, very I, sweet. Yeah, all the other ones I picked were high rye. Um, I'm not. What is it? Thirty seven. Whatever they want. Mm, whatever it is, high but, rye. It's very good. So, so one fourteen. Yeah, a little I over one fourteen. Think the other one's a one sixteen. Okay. Um, the other one's my. I like the other one just a little bit better. Okay. They're all my children, but um, sure. I don't beat this one as much. Well, this has got a really, really nice citrusy nose. Oof. Um, you can definitely smell the the. It's, it's a little sweet oak. on the palate. Yeah, mm-hmm. very sweet on the palate, but it's still got that heat behind it, which is I think really it goes nice. great with the with the guild. Give me like a little creamy creaminess between the two. It's yeah. very very complimenting. Yeah. I can taste the oak in in it more than I can smell it for sure. It's like a sweet rise. It rises in there. It's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very good, man. Good pick. Mm. So, speaking of picks, Garrett, tell us a little bit about what we're getting ready to do Please. tomorrow. What am I getting you into? What are you um, getting us into? So, I've wanted to do this for a long time. Um, just, uh, just between the fact that, uh, you know, I've seen – a good deal of uh, commemorative picks around the Indianapolis area for a while. Um, notable causes, all of them. And we, um, we got on board in a big way with a nonprofit within the last year. Um, my wife has, uh, gotten on board as a state ambassador for mission 22. Okay. And we're going to be doing a commemorative pick for her cousin. Um, 
Ryan. He we lost him a few years ago. Um, it's just <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we lost him a few years ago, and we wanted to do something. Um, and I kind of had to remember the last time he was on leave. He actually spent pretty much the entirety of the week hanging out with me in the basement, drinking my bourbon, playing Madden, kicking my ass, and mm. dipping a lot of Copenhagen in my basement. <laughs> so, I think I had like a 12-pack of dip spitters, you know, to take up to the trash. By Sounds the like we need to get him a smoke eater for his basement now, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that is on my to-do list. I, I don't even know what those begin to cost, uh, but um, I'd get myself into some trouble, I'm sure, smoke-proofing <laughs> yeah. the the bourbon room and everything and i mean me and dan have had a number of times on there i gotta get you guys down there sometime yeah kick back have some pours um after you get the smoke eater (laughs) yeah (laughs) but nonetheless we wanted to get on board and do something uh do something that was you know cool and memorable at the same time um and so i said to myself why don't i actually just do a barrel pick you know why don't we why don't we put something together get something really cool uh, so we're going to actually, after much consultation and figuring out, you know, what's going to be most competitive for, for people to want to get in on, cause it's more about sharing the story. I want, I want the bottles to sell because I want to share the story. Right. So, um, we're going to go with a, uh, starlight double Oak pick heading out tomorrow to go get it. Heck yeah. What we're getting beyond that. I don't really know. Yeah. I said before we started, um, I would not be disappointed if it wound up being a double Oak dry been getting into rye a little bit more lately yeah. come to appreciate it and double oak ryes are delicious it, it, it's it's amazing the the same stereotypical statement comes whenever you bring rye into the conversation oh it's too spicy it's it's always just like a very generic like you know i think maybe somebody pretty much everybody's probably just tried the wrong high west or something like that that gave them yeah you know, way too much too spice or spice. midwinter night dram or something like that that just they they didn't really care for and um I, I thank Peerless for changing my mind because Peerless's ryes are fantastic. Yeah. A little too expensive. They're listening. Um, love <laughs> you, but I can't afford you sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was yesterday was their release of the toasted batch two, right? Yeah, yeah. That looked good. I think we're yeah. gonna swing by and probably pick some up tomorrow. All right. Fingers All right. crossed. But. Heck yeah. Well, well, Mike and I are still trying to figure out what time we have to be back, so we'll figure out if we can make it there or not. But we'd like to. We'll try. I'll we'll bring you back one it. if you're going to make it a right, fun yeah. way. Right, right, we'll appreciate cool. that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's like, you know, you saying like the generic, oh, it's too spicy. I think that's how a lot of people are with wheat too. Um, not Ooh. with the spice part, but with that like earthiness. Um, a lot of people think that that's, and we've always been into higher rise and cash shrink stuff. Uh, wheats was our kind of crux, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no uh-huh. pun intended. Um, it... Uh, kind of opened our eyes a little bit this year as we got into like the whiskey acres stuff and then the some larceny of the larceny first stuff. larceny la- or yeah. last larceny last year yep. was good yeah. 123s um so this year we've expanded our wheat profile a lot um and there's a lot of really good wheats out there Here that there can be differentiated between like a young grain and just a grain forward you know note um earthy i guess not medicinal but earthy um so that that was kind of our thing um was wheats not rise because i think the only rise that you don't really care for are like the new riff ones because they have that like minty note when you in get there. To that mint and that yeah that kind of thing there i'm i'm out i hate yep. mint the and balboa like, the balboa yeah. rye yeah yeah <laughs> which I mean, is that's I one can, of my favorites but. i can appreciate it i just don't like the flavor of the mint Right. And it's just my, I mean, I, I, get that. I can see why they have people a Christmas like rye in there, something like that. Chocolate. Or? Yeah, the chocolate, chocolate malted yeah, rye. Yeah. 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 I, I like that one. That was, that was one that I did like. Chocolate malt's pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. I didn't we like, I didn't like the Balboa, but the, the chocolate, chocolate malted was. So what about the hard truth chocolate? You tried that one? Um, I've, I don't know if I've had that one. I've, I like their sweet mash rye. I think yeah. that's super solid. They, it is. They did a really good job with that. Well, we they did. did a chocolate malt and a caramel malt. And we were, yeah. we were down there recording with them earlier this week. And, um, yeah, we got to try it, drink some of the uh, chocolate malted mm-hmm. high, or um, sweet mash rye. Yeah, so good. I mean, all that chocolate pops through, and in a really, really good way. Not a overwhelmingly like flavored way, just in a good way. Goes great with the knuckle sandwich. <laughs> it went great with the knuckle sandwich, didn't yeah. it? Did uh did so we did a pick with them not too long. I think earlier March. You know, we picked two barrels, so we tried, God, I think like six different barrels to begin with. 
And then they they just like took us through the warehouse and we opened up like I don't know six or ten more. Yeah. And we did a four roses pick earlier that morning, so we were already pretty <laughs> we were pretty popped. But man, yeah, why don't you tell like, us about that that lineup? That was like three or four days of picks, right? Oh no, we did uh, we did twenty eight picks in five days. Jesus, in, what? Yeah. Let, let's let's talk about that. Damn, tell, let's talk about it. Yeah, give the <laughs> give us the roster. Uh, so my buddy uh, Rocco from Rocco Wine and Spirits out in California is just a baller. Um, they are. I th- I'm not sure if they're the number one Buffalo Trace distributor in Cali, but uh, he's he's up there. So he just he brings a lot of punch. He brings a lot of power. Um, like usually likes to get his buddies, some influencers, and some other people, and bring him in on the picks. So yeah. we had, I um, we probably had at one point twelve or fifteen different people um, throughout the week. But I mean, we started off with uh, I forget which one we started with, but you know it was like Monday morning at nine o'clock. All right, we're we're uh, we're hitting this, then we're hitting up Peerless, then we're hitting the next one. And I mean, it was like three or four a day, and we're doing anywhere from two to three picks a day. Um, and then, you know, we hit up the big boys, Four Roses, um, Buffalo Trace. That was cool. We got to stay at the Stag Lodge. Oh, um, heck yeah. Which was amazing. Um, they did they did it right. They they kept us on campus because they knew we were drinking all day. <laughs> so I said, we're going to we're gonna have you stay get, you guys stay here. Um, yeah, dude, that's perfect. Come drink through the night. But yeah, I mean, at, at one point, it's. You know, there's only so much you can drink, and I mean, I, I feel bad. I'm I'm not a big flavored person, um, you know, or, or finished. I I, th- I think Hard Truth is. I don't know if they, if a lot of their stuff is finished or they do not a lot of it, but they do have some other ones um, that are finished, yeah. uh, and they have some that are coming that are going to be. It seemed um, it seemed like we next t- year they have a French oak that's coming. We so. tasted a lot of you know the PX share all these different different barrels, and again, you know, it's my. 18th the drink of the day and i'm like i <laughs> guys i'm i got nothing yeah and i i don't really go for a lot of that stuff anyway i'm so. tired boss this, yeah. t- <laughs> <laughs> this tastes like liquor yeah and i you know and a couple chugs in the morning that really kind of ruins everything too yeah. so yeah yeah that's got to be hard you never start with the chug actually <laughs> you always start with the chug yeah we have to calibrate so you know a morning drink will do you good but yeah yeah. Open you up a little bit. So do you, okay, that's a good question because, you know, Isaac, it was the first one I think we would have really started talking to us about. He likes to, he likes to calibrate his palate when he first, you know, gets going on picks. So he always takes something. His With case, a similar match. His JTS yeah. Brown, because he knows that inside out. He can taste it. He knows it. And if his palate's off and he's not tasting what he normally tastes, he's like, I'm probably not going to be good on this pick today, guys. <clears throat> hmm. Do you have a, a bourbon that just like, that's the one you know, no matter what you drink it? It's always going to be exactly there, and if you're not tasting, you're not tasting it. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I always go back to E.H. Taylor Small Batch. That's just yeah. my – I yep. fell in love with that like that is home. six years ago, and that's been kind of my – I don't want to say every day, but that's where I that's where I always gravitate back towards. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, typically when I'm doing picks, I like to let the – I like to let the distillery – hey, this is – let's start with this. Lead it off. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of times they'll they'll do that. They'll right. – okay, hey, this is our – this is our – our sample here. This is our. Uh, this is the one that we're going to baseline off of, and then we're going to go from here. Go from here. Um, Buzzards, Buzzards Roost. Sorry, that was the first one that we did, and so we started with their main line. And I think we tried, you know, six or seven other ones, um, whether they be finished or not. But because I think each distiller does it different. Again, you know, they know. I, they should know what they're doing. Um, yeah. You know, so let's let's taste it in order of this, and then this is where we'll finish up. So I mean, I guess I've well. <laughs> I take that back for this pick that we did for the Chugs pick uh, 4.0. I started off with the E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof, so yeah. I knew I was going to be drinking Barrel Proof whiskey. So yeah, so that's yeah. that was my first bourbon. E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof. Yeah, Jeez. like a side of like Kentucky Gentleman when I was yeah. in high school. Man, right? starting off high. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> definitely, so like, definitely yeah, it's probably been about out. 15 years. My wife gave me a bottle for like a. Yeah. birthday present or something that wow. somebody gave to her. Yeah. And this was back when like Total was, Wine and Liquor Barn still had it on the shelf for so like probably $69. Like, yeah, I was going to say like 60, 70 bucks. Yeah. So like that was the first uh-huh. real bourbon I ever had. Man. And I, I, envy you. I was like, dude, this is amazing. This is awesome. And like literally the next year, like you couldn't find it anywhere. Oh, yeah. Secondary yeah. was like 125. Yeah. So like still like we could get it, but mm-hmm. didn't want to pay secondary then, you know, then two, three, four years later. Now it's, you know, Five six hundred bucks. Five six seven eight. It's it's dro- it's dropped a bit. Yeah, it's though. gone back down to about four fifty. Uh, so, yeah. but yeah, about time. I need it to go back into stores. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I miss. Fi- I mean, even a small batch. Like I used to love the small batch. Yeah. Finding it for forty two dollars at like 
Apu's grocery store. I used to go into big. I mean, I, I used when I used to go back into Big Red. And I'd be like, "Hey, you got anything in the back?" You know, and they would, "Oh, hey, it's Dan. He's coming back. Yeah, we got six things for you." And yeah. then that just stopped happening. You know, yeah. who's Jeff the Creed? <laughs> that bloody <laughs> bloody butcher, <laughs> moldy bloody butcher. It's, yeah. You know, I'll yeah. tell you what I got. So we, that was one of the places we went to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a it's a gorgeous campus. Um, I've heard it was. The guys are really nice, and I've got I got a buddy that he likes that funk. He likes that bloody butcher corn. They've well, got, somebody. There must be a lot of people out there. They wouldn't be continuing to produce the juice. And I, and I'll yeah. tell you what. I, is if you like the wheats, they've got the new. It's a the six year wheat. Six year yeah. wheat. So if you, it's not terrible. If you open it and you let it, you put it over to the side, and you go have dinner, and then you come back, you tickle it a little bit. It'll 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 creep up on you. It's, it's not terrible. I was able to try a sample of that mm-hmm. one. It's not terrible. The I, I I I personally don't like the funk on the other ones. I've got a buddy that loves it, but the uh, I I don't mind that that six year weed. It's not uh, it's not bad. I don't know if it's something I would pick. Yeah, no. Right off See the that, bat, that's ass. my big big thing too. Is like we'll go to we'll go places and we'll taste through a bunch of stuff, and then there's one that's like, oh, that's not so bad. Mm-hmm. But there's Would so many there's so it? many good st- right. yeah right yeah <laughs> that's why we always tell people when we go on picks. I'm sure you do too. Is like you know what you don't have to walk away with a pick yeah. if nothing comes out. Yeah. The way you want it, don't settle for the best one of the day. Yeah, if it's not if it's not a banger you think is going to sell out, then don't buy it. And these are test towel. I'm just gonna buy. Some sometimes after ten drinks though, it's it's, it's hard. really good. It's really yeah, hard to say right. no to. You're right. <laughs> That's what we. I know a couple of them we've been on. We've tasted. And, you know, we we finally got to the very last one. I'm like, oh man, this is the best one ever. Well, Starlight was the one we did too. Yeah, and we're like. This is the best one, man. We're, we're picking this. Didn't even have to go do any more t- tasting. And I, but we'd already tasted like 35 barrels. Yeah. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. And we were all the way back going home. Shit, God, I hope that comes out good. <laughs> I hope it's as good as we think it is. And it was. So it worked out. Well, when we did the Elijah Craig pick at Heaven Hill, well, it was pretty much unanimous with the yeah, exception of two. <laughs> and Isaiah was one of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he picked like the least favorite out of everyone else. Yeah. And then... Almost everyone else picked the third. Lisa was the only one that did that picked different. She the one that she picked was the, the lower proof of all of them, and yeah. that's just her profile. She yeah. likes a little bit lower proof, and so that kind of got her. But the one we picked, we loved. So, so good. <laughs> how many how many people do you normally take on you with picks? Because I think there's a there's a. I think, we have seven. I think five. We had, we had seven on that one only because um, we had we wanted to bring a couple extra ladies yeah. on the on the I, pick. But I think an odd usually number's five. Good too, like. I think I think an odd number is good, and then yeah. not. I wouldn't do much over seven. I've done yeah. some with like eleven people. That's too many people. Yeah. Like, too many disagreements. Who too many. Yeah. yeah. Jen went on well, one at West Fork, and they had like thirteen people. Yeah. yeah. Like and I'll say, I mean, I I do five is the magic number, I think too. Yeah. And I, we, but one thing I like to do is, you know, depending on what the picks for, like for us here, we're a cigar lounge, so most of the people going on our pick, if not all of them, smoke smokers. cigars. But on someone like you that doesn't, you know, make, you're doing picks for stores that they don't care about cigars or not. Yeah. You know, it's always good to, to have someone that smokes cigars, maybe someone that smokes cigarettes. And then That's you what have Jackie said. different people yeah. that have different palates. So that when you come together with something, it's going to hit a lot of palates, not just yep. the cigar smoker. Yeah. It was, it was interesting with the Four Roses pick because we had, have you guys done that? No, I, I it's been yet. so many no. years I've been to Four Roses. I mean, I've been there, but I haven't done the it's, pick. So they it's been probably you, 10 years I've, I've never been, been. They take so. you back in the pick room and it's just, just gorgeous building and um they've got all 10 recipes literally on a little carousel for you and you're just like it's nine in the morning <laughs> and they're all full pours nice and you, you you know you have at it so and that's a hard thing to do on you know day two or three after a two-day bender at um, 9 15 dan's like can i get a refill <laughs> yeah so you know you uh, typically how i go is i'll knock off a few right away i don't like this don't like this okay and, yeah but that's it's again it's hard to do with 10 10 of them um, yeah. and then i think i'm not sure how many people we had on that but we wound up kind of narrowing it down to four or five, um, and then we got our top, like, basically one to two, and then he's like, well, shit, I've already got that recipe. You know, so it's smart on his end because he was like, I want to I want to build a catalog of all sure, ten recipes, yeah. all ten barrel picks. And so he's like, even though this one's our favorite, we're going to go ahead and go with the second best one because it's the recipe we don't have. And I was kind of like, I mean, it's your store. Um yeah, I, you know, because this one's so good, but like, at the same time, why you know, am I here? <laughs> well, it's a super smart move. But at though. the same time, you know, yeah. if you're going to build a catalog of all ten recipes and have all ten single barrels, you know, yeah, I and mean, that's that's yeah. one way to do it too. But I've I've been with some other picks where there's you know there's so many people and 
it's you know you have three people that are coming in out of the woodwork that don't really know much about it and they're throwing the whole pick off and you're like this tastes like post-it notes when was the last time you had bourbon oh two yeah. years ago why, why are you okay. here why are you here yeah yeah, yeah. well it's like even doing double oak picks they're you know they're very popular right now everyone loves them but if you do a, a double oak pick today and you sell it out and then another month you do another double oak pick and then you do another one after that people are gonna at some point go you're going to do something different. Enjoy live harness racing action at Harris Hoosier Park, Tuesday through Saturday through November 30th. First post on weeknights is 6.15 p.m. and 7 p.m. on Saturdays. Also enjoy the Hop Bebop Concert Series to go along with racing on Saturdays with local musical acts live from the Hop Outdoor Recreational Area from 7 to 10 p.m. Admission is free. Harris Hoosier Park. Premier gaming in the heart of the Midwest. Except for Rob. Yeah, look at this. Nice and pretty at home. I am, <laughs> it looks like shit here. <laughs> I'm not, all right. I'm well, not pretentious, you asshole. Not at all. So God, we had man. a little snafu there with some power issues. Are we recording now? We are still recording. Yay. And I have, a, I have a backup audio channel that's going straight to the camera now. So. Yeah. So if this is like, if, we, if it's like we're watching a Chinese movie where they're talking English, but it's not. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> yeah, because all of a sudden it decided to like yeah, I'm tornadic sure. downpour here. Yeah. For no reason. Hard rain it's and supposed to be clear skies, honestly. And yeah. High, high, high winds right now knocked our power off. And guess what? Ten miles down the road it's sunny and yeah, perfect. at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Obama. <laughs> Thanks, Obama. It's gotta Politics. be Obama's fault. God dang it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> dang it. Oh, I well. really like Obama. Anyways, moving on. How are we doing? <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. We we're, can go there if we wanted to. We're going to yeah, seem like, like we yeah. drank way faster than we did because we lost about 30 minutes. Ago. I did drink way faster than I did. Well, other than <laughs> the fact that you actually did do that. Uh, well, I was pouring pretty heavy on those first two. Yeah. I'm like, I better slow down. So, yeah. so again, we're into the, the pink bottle. Um, this thing has got a lot more of the red fruit notes in it, which actually makes sense for the... Yeah. bottle and um i i love this i think i do like this one even more even though they're both great lower proof or two points no higher. this is this two, points two points higher, higher. Okay. yeah so but it but it drinks lower proof than the other one does um so we were just talking a little bit <laughs> off air because off of the air. storm um you got you still have bo- uh, bottles of this mm-hmm. to sell so um, i'm telling you guys these are two fantastic bottles i mean i'm so glad that we're in the world now that you know Sourced barrels are not a bad word anymore, and when people hear MGP, Such they realize man. it's going to be really great, especially when someone picked it. Yeah. Um, so these are two bottles you can get. Where where can people pick these two bottles up? So if you contact me on Instagram at Heavy Bourbon, you find them there, um, or uh, Roco Wine and Spirits, R O C O Wine and Spirits dot com. Um, there should be a link, and he can uh, ship those guys to you. Do you yeah, have an yeah. agreement with Roco to like only distribute this one through him? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a handshake agreement. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but do you but, have uh, any, do you have any places? I mean, I know it's, I yeah, you it's, do it's, picks. It's, it's not distributed, uh, not in any stores except for, uh, out in Cali. Um, okay. Or if you're, if you're local to Indy, um, I can definitely hook you, you up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Heavy bourbon, heavy bourbon, Instagram, Instagram. Facebook, Instagram. all of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I might, uh, snag a couple yeah. of those. Yeah. yeah. Those are good. Super solid. I like those. Those would be those. These would be a couple of great bottles for for you to buy. Buy one for yourself and buy one to take to your local you know meetup when you're going to be sharing bottles because no one's going to bring this, right. and you could bring something that no one's ever going to try. And I'm telling you right now, being being um, MGP Juice five years, both of them are about five years, almost six, almost six years, almost yeah. six, and uh, um, you're not going to find something any any. Of the MGP profile, any better than these two bottles? So, and you did both of these well through MGP? Yeah, through MGP. Okay. Well, th- uh, no, through through Cardinal Spirits. Through oh, the, that's right, that's right. Through Cardinal, Cardinal Spirits. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that part's in there or not. So we'll say it again. Went through Cardinal. <laughs> Cardinal. Uh, because the triangle matters. The triangle matters. Um, <laughs> it would be cool to do a newer style of that with uh, Whiskey House. That would be cool. I've been. Uh, I've I've had a few companies come to me and. You know, they say they want to you know, carry on the Chugs legacy. 
Um, which is which is fine. It's a good idea. I I think I right now personally, I think I'm getting more into the actual just the barrel picks. I'm having more fun doing that, and yeah, it's a lot less hassle than you know trying to offload 250 bottles or you know 200 and some bottles um, of of each barrel. You know, so it's I, I, it's been fun. It's been great. Um, I think it just have to be the right perfect opportunity, the right pairing um, to want to do that. So I don't know. I guess I guess if someone else if 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 I could find more distribution. Make that easier That's on me. That's the key. Yeah, yeah. Because man, I had a little, uh, I had a little sweatshop with just me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hand pumping all the hand pumping all the airbags and then scotch taping it, and my forearms got huge and not from masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> not this time. Yeah. So I got the wheel that with the weight on it. That's what oh. makes mine. <laughs> I got weak wrists. Whatever. You know, it's cool. Oh, it helps with my strength. It was downhill fast, didn't it? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, yeah, so, whiskey house stepping into the market, doing you know, I mean, it's BBC, but yeah, you know, those guys doing they don't, what they've always done. BBC doesn't like it when you call them BBC. Uh, big, mm, it's so much mm. quicker. <laughs> I did. We we uh, town bourbon. We did. We, we did a pick. We Look did how a, much time you just wasted. We did. I know. A, we did a pick there, and uh, I just kept saying BBC. And every every time anybody posts anything online, I always put BBC in a fire emoji. And they're like, I don't, I don't think that's well. I probably shouldn't. Love I blood. get it from a branding. Sounds good, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I do get it from branding side of it because how many times do we say BBC and people are going, "What do you mean?" <laughs> and if you're not explaining what BBC is, yeah, they just duck immediately. Yeah, but at this point, if you're a bourbon lover, you know what BBC is. That is oh, actually yeah. more of an homage to them that you're big enough now. We can actually use BBC, and people know what you are. Use the word so. big, <laughs> big, big, big. <laughs> I don't think you guys realize how much this guy drinks. Yeah. That's it's, one of the taglines for one of our guys here. <laughs> I don't think Scott, you understand how much Scott, I drink. This, yeah, exactly. For you, that was him. So that's where he is right now at the race in Iowa right now. Oh, he's, yeah, he's doing theirs. He's an IndyCar race fan, and he's out there drinking I and watching racing. Shirtless just like Indy? Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all <laughs> Dude, he was laying in a baby pool because <laughs> it was so pool, freaking yeah. hot out there. He was laying in it drinking <clears throat> bourbon. It I'll was great. You, <laughs> I went one time many years back. I went to the Indy 500, and I got a Coke lot spot, and I felt like we just did it right. It was like it was a miracle me and the buddy – so I was rolling in with, we're even able to park next to each other because the damn traffic directors and everything. Yeah. But we yeah. got our spots right next to each other. I brought a tent canopy. We had cornhole. We had coolers. We had a ton of water. We could have filled up a pool with the amount of okay, water. I'm going to tell you right now, as much fun as you had next year, carb day. List is getting Both you guys. All right. Oh, yeah. we've got like hundred people coming to this thing. It's yeah. Scott's campground in lot six. And I'm telling you what is a party. We do the live podcast out there now. We're going to yep. do that every year yeah, now. We did forever. It last year. Now it's and now um, it's an annual thing. We got so. we're inviting everybody to come out to this. It, it's Scott's campground, but we're going to invite everybody out here. So you guys need to come out. Dan had a we, slip and slide in a pool in his backyard, an inflated pool in his party yesterday. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, we it's perfect. We get wild. So I I I, I love the indie. Was uh, it bourbon running down to keep it moist? <laughs> it was for me. I was sweating bourbon God, at that point. Think about that. You like actually. Only like snag a nipple or something like that, and it's just like <laughs> fucking <laughs> cauterize it immediately. Though so we, we we typically I healed do the, so uh, fast. <laughs> we typically do the snake pit for the uh, five hundred. So I'm a big uh, I'm a big pit guy. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, it is a different you pit like, from you back like in the eighties, right? I like the EDM. I like the music. Um, like sweating on other people. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so if you are out there, yeah, on we'll carb come, day, we'll come on out. Stop by, man. I mean, Put your out. belly on them. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is we'll so much bellies. fun. There's always. You know, the the big the key is when you walk onto the property, which it is their property, um, you walk out there and you have to take a swig off the Eagle Rare handle because that's that's the entry into the campground. Say no more. And then there's always good food. But you want to get there early, though. So you don't want to be the last the, one. You don't want the floaties. floaties. Yeah. So pause real quick on that. How just, are you just like possibly going you don't to be the have... Last one. <laughs> How are you going to possibly have enough Eagle Rare to cover that many people coming oh, in? Oh, once it's gone, it's gone. Okay. Once yeah. it's gone, it's so, gone. So, like, so next year, we're a commemorative our, our, we might swig no, off no, of an empty no, no, bottle? No, like, no, no. no. <laughs> we still do the one bottle. Okay. Our goal next year is to have that bottle gone by noon, not before nine we go at night. Track? Yes, yes. Well, if you bring Dan, it's going to be gone by the oh, first yeah. 10 people. Dude. I'll bring a second bottle if you chug the whole freaking 1.75. <laughs> oh, God. Again, guys, we want to drink responsibly. 
You know, yes. actually, yes, we will Ky- never do that. <laughs> Kylie saw that video just the other day. The video that's uh, going viral for the guy chugging the whole um, Crown Royal bottle. Yeah, yeah. He like he just he just chugs it like waterfall. Like he doesn't even have lips on the bottle. Just chugs the whole thing, and then he cuts out. He's about to gag with like maybe like a few like maybe an ounce or two left in the bottle. He's just <gasps> bitches. <laughs> <laughs> that- that sounds horrible. <laughs> it sounds Chugging so bad, Crown especially Royal. with it being Crown. It's like at least chug something tasty. Come on. <laughs> Do you guys even Gosh. have Crown here? Yeah, like Probably Crown not. Apple. We've got we've got Crown. Oh, really? There is a there is a a few people like Crown and Coke. I mean, Crown and Coke's like Jack and Coke. So we do have it. It's the Michelob whiskey. That's what you grow up on. It reminds me of your childhood. <laughs> Dude, from my childhood. Childhood. so <laughs> it is, it is my childhood old. because when I was 16, I used to go out. It was Hooks back then. Now it's CVS. Yeah. And I would go in at 16, and I looked like I was about 13. And I would walk in, and I would get a box of Crown. You didn't have a full beard at 16? No, no, no. I started that when I was about 17. Yeah. Um, yeah. Walked out, and they would they would never card me because what what kids buying a $30 bottle of Crown Royal at that age? You're high roller. I started buying that for about a year, and then after that, I started buying anything I wanted to, and they never carded me. So I was actually good. He walked out with Kavassi. So, so basically, no, basically what he's saying, it's all about relationships, guys. It's so all about local, relationships. Make your relationships with yes, your local liquor yes. stores. As long as you're 21. Except for you, know, you kids. No kids. <laughs> that's what I feel like every single person, when they change the tobacco law, mm-hmm. I think it became a relationships game. I think a lot about that oh, because dude, that happened sure, yeah. after, after you know, I was well past 21. But think about all those people that were getting their hands on a can of Copenhagen at 16 years yeah. old or whatever. Just all those type people. Yeah. All tobacco. You know. Well, but, and the weird thing is the laws are not very clear. You know, you have to be 21 to smoke cigars and get and buy tobacco, buy cigars, all that stuff. Or I'm sorry, not smoke, but buy. buy. You yeah, know there's what? not if, a lot of if, info. If Dad in there buys about you a cigar smoking. and you're 18. I mean, what's the law on that? No one knows. Yeah. So it's like, you know, one of those it's things It's not a where consumption thing. It's, it's a not, purchase thing. It's not. You're right. But all those That's 18-year-olds right. that were just outraged when three years got added on. Dude, I'll tell you. I know, The right? thing that pisses me off the most about that is we send our kids over at 18 to die for their country, but they can't come back and have a beer and a cigar. Wow. What the hell's wrong with that world? You get man? a hooker anytime, though. Sorry, never mind. That's a different story. Well, that, yeah, that was when you went to jail. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there you don't have jail. to be 18 for that one. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. I just was. Uh, Sorry, anyways, moving on. Yeah, yeah, move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so let, me at least, let me at least say this part. So we do have a couple of events coming up. We do. One that you guys might want to come out to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's August 3rd, I believe. Let me make sure. It is August 3rd. Thank you. From? So it's the... Um, it's the Heaven Hill release party of the the Grainy Glass series. Yes, sir. Um, they're coming out here. They're doing it. this is the Midwest release party right here. Those new, um, the new one. The yeah, new Grainy ones. Glass. Yes, yes. I nice. want to get my hands on that. Rye. Yeah, come we're, on. I'm gonna try it. Well, we're definitely gonna be getting some in here for pours. Obviously, I can't sell bottles, but um, that Aww. will be coming to that. That's actually starting to ship. Here really soon, actually. I think I've seen some people. Uh, I think it, it she might. She said Arizona has already got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, out down in Arizona. here, here in uh, Midwest, I believe it's supposed to be shipping in the next week, um, but we're going to do the actual Heaven Hill release here. Release. That tracks August out. The the Arizona would get it first, even though we're the next state over. That that, check, that makes checks it, out. Makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, it's super easy because you know FedEx and UPS can't make it one state over. Right. I can testify to that, by the way, because <laughs> they don't. They and don't. They're terrible. Yeah. Final Third Cigar is Indiana's exclusive Aladino Cigar Lounge. Come to Final Third for a selection of over 20 different Aladino cigars, including the Cameroon, a wonderful cigar with nice light flavors. Make sure and visit Final Third, the Aladino exclusive cigar lounge for Indiana. Well, I mean, you're retiring in Arizona. They have to have something to drink when they're retired. You're going to retire out there? Send them Jep the Creed. (laughs) Send them Uh, Long Hunter. Uh well, it's, it's funny. Some of those actually not bad. Okay, stuff. It's, it's actually, okay. some this of those, some great, of those distribution this is a great question. I'd love to ask wild. everybody. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What is single handedly, and it's probably going to be something that you had when you were younger, but single handedly, the worst thing you Kentucky ever, Tavern, Jeff the Cream, ever tried? <laughs> Jeff the Cream. I still say Kentucky Tavern. All right, I got, I got, I got one, and it was because of the abysmal hangover. No, no, no. no. Left. I will change my my answer. I got, I got the right answer for that. Go ahead, go ahead. So <laughs> in college, uh, 
you know, where I, I went to Wabash College up there in uh, Crawfordsville, Indiana, sourcing good stuff can be pretty hard. You know, you just kind of get you get accustomed to shelf names that you have a hard time affording, you know. Uh, but I found myself at CVS one day shopping for liquor because it was a lot closer than the Kroger was. And uh, I saw a bottle that looked like it, it carried the same shape as a Jim Beam bottle, but not the same label. <laughs> And I, John I Joe Bum. <laughs> I picked this thing up and I, I was like, well, we're, we're going to give this a try, you know, and me and my buddies were, we're drinking it. We're pounding it as, as quickly as we can uh, because it did taste horrible. And the hangover, I mean, I kid you not, I have had some hangovers that lasted through, you know, lunch on Sunday. I had a hangover until eight o'clock at night on Sunday as a Ooh. young man. And that just shouldn't happen. No, yeah, I've been there. Jethro T. Boots. That was you. Jethro T. Boots. Yeah, it was the original Jeff the Crease. <laughs> might have been. They rebranded as Jeff the Creed. All right, Dan, what's yours? So, so I, I, I like Jeff the Creed, the six-year weed at Now. Let's just go ahead and put that yeah. out there. I, Man, I have not had that yet. I like so, you, but I hate this one. Look, sales <laughs> reps know that batch one was garbage. I will tell so. you, I really want to see them succeed. I want to see something come out good. I think they're, I, they're at the turning if, point. Okay, so if, if, if you guys do get a chance... Go visit the distillery. Oh, it's, I've shot weddings there. It's an amazing place. It's, it's good. Yeah. Have you been to the tasting room? Yeah. Hey, That's, by the way, Jeff the Cree, we already reached out to you. Yeah. You <laughs> shun, sales rep. You shunned Mike the first time, but the sales rep said we're in, so sales we're in. Sales rep, super cool, dude. Yeah. They're all super nice, so yeah. we'll preface it with that, too. Make better shit. The, Anyways. The taste is, <laughs> well, but it's the corn. <laughs> Find new corn. The tasting room is like, you're in like a Game of Thrones. I mean, you're, everyone's got a throne they're sitting on. With it's intimidating a, almost. Oh, it's awesome. That's yeah. amazing. So cool. Super cool. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll show you some pictures. Wear your gear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So cool. All That's your Game gorgeous. of Thrones gear yeah. in there. That'd be great. <laughs> you got some cool pictures from there. Um, nice. Worst bourbon. Um, I, I think all whiskey is good whiskey at some point. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The marketing man <laughs> the comes novelist. out. Right. Comes out. I hate shitting on whiskey because there's good parts of everything. Um, oh, there, there's I'll, I'll not. I mean, there's except, not. except for Will Pot still. I hate Will Pot oh, still. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm with you. I hate, I had, it. I, I hate I, it. God, I forget where I was at. Such a beautiful presentation for such a crappy whiskey. What? God, <laughs> I'd love to drink some copper. Where the hell was <laughs> I? I was at, uh, I was, I was at I was someplace downtown, and uh, I had somebody else buy in, so I was trying to be conscious of what we were spending you know and so i'd asked for one of the will at purple tops one of the good weeded's um which are good they're fantastic you know and it, was, it was like 115 a pour or something i'm like okay and i was like that's that's, that's a little little pricey for me but uh he's like well if you if you like that you're gonna love the will at pot still it's just a really, <laughs> really good weeded and i was like oh i haven't heard of that one yet oh yeah. that's that's and he was he was like and it was i think it was like 20 dollars a pour Oh, That's still geez. overpriced. Well, way I mean, way overpriced. And they had give me know, a dollar. Well, they had they had Eagle Rare for like twelve bucks or something. I don't. The, the pricing was way, way, way off. And I was I just looked at him and I was, I you know I don't I don't want to be a, a dick and and super pretentious, but I was like, man, it's not. It's just not good. <laughs> so, yeah, got this really good stuff, and mind you, it'd turn into a great bong if you have the ability to turn it into one, <laughs> dude. They are beautiful guys. bottles. The bottle, the especially gorgeous. if you get the big, the one seven five. Oh my god! Do this you remember is a beautiful bottle? I think it was back in twenty twenty. There was a rumor that they were not going to be releasing those bottles anymore. They shouldn't because the well, no. suck. Well, and they shouldn't. But the <laughs> but the, the whole thing there was like a whole run on the bottle. Like everyone went out to buy them, and I it was like a, I don't know if it was like one of those rumors that was released oh. from them. But I do were, remember that because they yeah. had there are some in circulation that are not the pot still. And okay. it's it's not like the gym. It's a little wider than the square. I do remember that. Yeah. Huh. Man. All right, Mike, what's your bad whiskey? So I'm, oh, I'm going to finish it off. 100%. Okay, okay. Yeah, only because I was gifted a bottle when I was much younger, around 21, plus or minus six-ish years. Minus C. <laughs> so I, I drank all the bad shit I, growing up. I go down to the basement of my buddy's house, and he's like, here, drink this. I was like, all right. I pulled Dan Kidd out of myself, and I chugged that bottle. Ugh. Next thing I know, I'm face down on the stairs, and my buddy's dad's walking down the stairs like, what the fuck happened? We've been gone for 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Uh, uh, so I'll tell you tomorrow. It'll always be Kentucky Tavern, for sure. Yeah. So um, my consolation yeah. prize goes to, and it's not the Bottled and Bond. I'm going to preface this. Bottled and bond early times is actual good shit. It is, you know, it screw is. top bottled and bond. It's yep. good. But the half gallon plastic bottle that my buddy had at his house of early times was horrid. Okay, that one was okay. bad. 
So you know that all the early time shit they're coming out with now, like all this crazy flavored shit. Have you seen all this? No. Oh, yeah. We'll look up names later. Yeah. There's like 50 of them. Like cookies and cream. What, so it's the new like, Burnett's? Basically, pretty called, much. It's the Burnett's of whiskey. Isn't it called like old early times or something like something, that? Something, yeah. Like, I don't, yeah. But they have like 50 different renditions of this flavored shit. No, I win. I okay. win because I know yours. The the worst bourbon of all time is freaking Starlight Cigar Batch. <laughs> Ambarana should never go into freaking whiskey. I'll tell you, there's, and I'm saying it's not Starlight; it's Ambarana. So we had we had we had, oh, we had some of that you yesterday. Had a tasting I pulled yesterday. some out you yesterday. Had the CT crunch yesterday. But so kinda. it's Ooh. that's such a weird. It's such a weird like just if you want to destroy your palate. <laughs> I think and you're saying it wrong. It's disgusting. <laughs> a, okay, so for, I don't care for it either. For a non-bourbon drinker, um, actually, so I, I did a little tasting with my neighbors, um, and so we had some, you know, we had some of this and some of that, and I, I finished it with because I was like, all right, what's if you're not used to drinking bourbon? Again, we can kind of get into the flavored, the flavored whiskey because I, I think that's a fucking joke to it begin is, with. It but is, the, yeah. The you know the the Amarana, it's just such an overwhelming. I was like, if you like cinnamon toast crunch, you're probably gonna like this because that's all you're gonna. I get. like cinnamon toast crunch, but it's it it just <laughs> I think it it destroys your palate. So it does. I had a buddy that did a he, they did th- th- this is back before all the Amarana Amarant whatever the hell you say it um, before Ambarana, all that got Ambarana, super ass. super popular. Just call it ass. Ass, yeah. It's just a cinnamon. It's a palate. It's a palate destroyer. And it's I, terrible. I, I told him that I was like, you know, if, yeah, you never start with it. If there's one drink at the end of the night, you, you never know, go full Amarana. Like, <laughs> and I, I wanna I wanna have that and I want that cinnamon taste in my mouth when I wake up in the morning. That's what I'll that's uh, what I'll have. But yeah, I, it's a cinnamon funk that I just can't I can't stand. But but it's mostly like the ones like Starlight and some of the other ones that age it for six months or more. Yeah. It's like, you know, like Alan Bishop did one. We we tried it when we were doing our barrel pick. He literally had staves in a, a vat for less than twenty four hours. And I'm yelling at you, take it out now. It's fine now. It's fine now. And I tried an RD1 that had it maybe in there for like six days at the most. It was fine. The RD1 was pretty good. It was fine. It's not bad. But it's when they start aging them for months and it pulls all that funk out of the barrel. It's just, it's wrong. Is that, wrong. Fa- is that phase, you know, is that is that done now? I'm not sure if. God, I hope so. Which one? The, the, the um, Amberano one? No, no. no Probably still people not. coming out. So RD1 actually hired a wood scientist mm-hmm. to play around with other finishes of course um but i don't know i i, I doubt it's done there's no way no like, there's no way because well and i mean you look at starlight now and they i mean it used to be they'd have the starlight release they would sell out in 10 minutes oh, yeah. and then you couldn't get it now yeah, they're not selling out anymore it's on the shelves everywhere now um i think the the biggest thing for me for the start of my thing was they call it a cigar batch i'm like and it does not go with cigars at all it ruins a cigar so that was probably what set me on my what's jack hatred. always say he's like everyone always says oh this has hints of leather in it I'm like did you ever lick leather what's your I'm like yeah when i was younger but so <laughs> so on the instagram Plus, feed that starlight posts up something about having a cigar batch or whatever and then rob's in the comments that thread saying hate from cigar no, or, hey from final third no. <laughs> what's and honestly i will hate, hate i don't hate it's on not starlight for the people that like it Good on you. We don't like Jeff the Creed. If you like Jeff the Creed, good like, on you. I like the six-year weeded, by the way. And, and if you look at, like, Jim Beam White Label, not a big Jim, yeah, Jim Beam White Label. But, but you know what? Someone People that loves it. that stuff, guess what? You win the lottery because you get to buy a bottle for 15 bucks. It's like, it's not a bad thing. It's yeah, it's always it's your like taste. like the benchmark. What's, what's your take on the uh, the Joseph Magnus? Cigar? I love their cigar batch. So, Theirs is actually very tolerable because it and goes I with <laughs> never cigars. Had That's yeah. why you've never it goes had with it? cigars. Never had it. I you got, don't have I, any left, do you? I got some at home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to bring you a sample. Try. Yeah, it's uh, it's a different profile than what everyone else considers to be a cigar batch. Now, well, is, it, is, is that meant to be smoked with cigars? Was yes. that their, was that their yeah. meaning behind it? Yes. With Joseph, yeah, yeah. Because with it's, most of their stuff. it's finished in sherry, um, armagnac, and cognac barrels. Okay. So all those things go really nicely with cigars. So it's, it's actually smoky f- does finish a almost. great job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even just the silver label Joseph Magnus up there, it's everything but the Armagnac barrels. It's great with cigars. Um, I just feel like if you're going to call it a cigar batch, it should go with a cigar. And that was my biggest deal. They're, they yeah. were pulling it out because of the cinnamon and leather kind of shit going on there. I'm like, you can't all be nah. brothers of the leaf. 
no sending hate. I'm not sending hate. No, Brothers Leaf's another brand that's their actually doing actually some good okay. stuff. Yeah, some They're of their new stuff, stuff is really good too. Yep. Yeah. Do you know the story? Have you had any of their stuff? So the this dude started it, you know, MGP stuff. But the whole purpose behind his blends were to smoke with, or to have with a cigar. Yeah. Um, but it's source stuff, and like in its infancy, I don't know how long he had the company, like when he started it. Um, but the Henderson brothers bought him out after they sold Angel's Envy. So like, I mean, that's pretty freaking good. Like, do some more. Right after, sure you right more. after he started blending his whiskeys, you know, the Henderson brothers bought him out. So, like, he's doing something right. And we've, yeah. we've tried a few things. Here, I'll take a little more. So, um, I know you're you're very heavily involved with the, the, the bourbon world right now. Are there some brands out there that you're, like, super excited about seeing them starting to grow or maybe not even growing yet, but you think they're going to make a big move? I'll tell you what, man. I, I used to – and I think it's – I think everyone grows in their in – their, whiskey journey you know I, you start off and it's like okay whiskey and coke and then like whiskey on a big cube and then oh man i'm so hard i can drink whiskey straight yeah you know whiskey neat you know or whatever oh, fuck I'm however hard. it goes then you then you kind of gravitate toward the the higher proof there was the longest time i was like man i hate rye i hate rye and then it would be like i hate rye but this one's good i don't think i yeah. ever had well i guess with wheat so, or, or, you know, I, yeah. I, I hate rye, but this one. And I kept saying that, and then now I'm like, okay, I, I can't say that anymore because I like rye whiskey. Um, yeah. Sagamore. I saw a bottle of Sagamore over there. Yeah. I tried just some of their regular standard rye. They've got a whole, because um, right now I think they're doing a, um, they're doing a whole grain to glass yep. thing. So they're, they're, it's in what, Maryland? So yep. they're, you know, it's from the fields of Maryland. It's not the bloody butcher corn. So I think you'll like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're, Bloody they're, butcher rye. They're they're, they're, they're doing they're doing the whole the, the grain to glass thing. Um, I'm I'm like halfway through one of my bottles right now, and I think it's fantastic. And I'm I'm super stoked. To, I've got a bottle of the uh, the du- the double barreled, whatever that fancy bottle is over there. Uh, which um, one? The the, 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 the the it's one of the Sagamore rye. We have the castoring. Okay, yeah. So yeah, the, yeah. Sag, it's a is it, is, it, is it double barreled? Might or, be. So I don't, yeah, so I don't anyway. remember. That was one of the ones that we did on the tasting that we did here. Yeah. So I'm it's I'm good. that's that's been one of the the kind of just random random ones that's been kind of a stick out in my mind because I was surprised by how damn good it really was. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I mean, I get sent a lot of whiskey. Um. And you know, some of it's okay, and some of, and and I'm at the point now. I my schedule's so busy. You know, I I try and review it or you know make a video of it, and I have. I should probably do a little bit more research. I might take seven seconds to Google, but I don't. I usually just crack it, and I'm like, okay, this is – there it is. Or it's like, well, damn, this is actually really good. And that's that's been one for me. Um, and, again, for being a rye that I don't like. Um, well, that's a good point because we talked about that last week, like looking it up and doing research on it. We yeah. had a couple guys up here from uh, New Albany. Uh, their channel is so into bourbon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Glenn Hockersmith and Charlie. Um, shout they, out. Shout out. They um, – they don't watch YouTube. Yeah. They don't watch other social media because they, they don't want anything to influence like their own opinion. I respect that. Yeah. I, I think there, there, there's, I think, I think that's a, that's a part too. Cause I used to watch all like liquor hound. Like, cause yeah. you know, the guy's gotten a million bottles. So of course he knows what he's talking about. And I used to really dive and spend hours watching all these reviews and everything else. And now, right. now it's like, you know, I know what I like. Um, I don't want to watch a review and have somebody else, you know, formulate my opinion for me because right, it's right. so easily done. You know, I do all these tastings, um, and that's one thing I do is I'll try and okay, what do you think about it? What do you think about it? What do you think about it? You know, because I can tell you, oh man, this is this tastes like leather. This tastes like blah blah yeah. blah blah blah. Whatever. This is the best stuff I've ever had, and I've already got. I've I've made an opinion in your head on what I think you should say, and especially if you if you don't have the confidence and you're like. You know, you don't feel up to, you know, challenging me. You, like, if you don't want to say, I don't like that, then, yeah. you know, you're not going to, and you're going to agree with me, and you are, you're going to formulate your opinion before you've already tasted it. Sure. Well, and that, that's a great point when you're doing a barrel pick, too, uh-huh. is we always tell people, don't shout out your notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't tell me caramel, uh-huh. because everyone's going to taste caramel Fucking as soon as you say it. Rob's sitting exactly. in the corner going, vanilla, 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 <laughs> vanilla, vanilla caramel, caramel. Oh. I love it. <laughs> but, uh, but that's the case. You know, if, if, as soon as you say some note, everyone's yeah. going to be looking for that note as opposed to trying to figure out what they think about yeah. it. Yeah. So that <clears> is a couple, couple names that you might know. I don't know. Prav, yeah. Seraph, mm-hmm. uh, Gordon Hugh, Cork and Bottle. Yeah. Uh, those are two of the guys that I get to interview oh, for nice. uh, this yeah. documentary. Nice. So Seraph from, doing, like, what, Kansas City? 
right? Is Washington, D.C., I think. Aren't they in Missouri? Is that the... No, Ferrand. Sorry, I'm thinking Ferrand. I think he might be on the list, too. Ferrand is in Missouri. Yeah. Um, um, but both both of them are, are two, you know, original influencers, I guess you could call them, of, you know, the whiskey industry um, between cork and bottle and, like, you know, the DuPont wines. Um, I am going to do full circle here. Do it. We're smoking the Crux um, Guild. We've been going an hour and 15 minutes on the cigar. I'm not even close to being halfway through the I second third mine, yet but... and i mean this thing is burning really slow it's got the nice baking spice notes that that pop well with both of these two bourbons so far um this thing every time i smoke it i'm like why am i smoking more of these so, nicaraguan I mean, right it is yeah. yeah yeah so that i think that's what gives me that creaminess out of this with, i don't with remember the if the uh i mean you could probably see on there better than i can the uh i think it's is it ecuadorian habano on the wrapper Ecuadorian wrapper, yeah. Yeah, so it's Ecuadorian Habano wrapper on it, but it's all Nicaraguan binder and fillers. So this thing think, is going really well. I mean, it's smoking slow. And I've only, I think I had to touch it up one time just because I was talking, but it's been burning ever since then. And I'm, I'm going to get three hours out of this cigar, I think. That's crazy. I doubt that. Watch me. We're an hour and a half in. Watch me. I just want to see you do it. Watch me, asshole. <laughs> hey, I want to. I want to see you keep drinking for another three hours. So we were. We were oh, talking. I got. I got I'm, I'm here till six, baby. It's fine. <laughs> so we were talking a little bit about Heaven Hill, and we were also talking about research, and that's one area where I think I've actually felt kind of short. Thank you to sponsor Deadwood Live. Derek with Deadwood Live is producing top quality live edge products as well as bourbon themed furniture. If you've been in the lounge, you've seen the custom live edge table and barrel stools produced by Derek. Be sure to give him a like and follow on Facebook at Deadwood Live. That's D-E-D Wood Live. Especially given that I'm, I, I've am i got the question presented to myself. I have not bothered in the late night scrolling hours just to simply, you know, pull up a few pages and read. Yeah. But maybe, maybe you guys can tell me a little bit more about it because uh, I've at least if I'm not mistaken, Heaven Hill does both Rossville Rye and Pikesville, right? They do both of those? Yes. Yes. Why do I like Pikesville so much more? I don't I mean I have I have a barrel pit I mean it granted it was a total wine pick, Rossville yeah. Rye, barrel proof, but somebody else asked us this this year. Did they? But honestly, Pikesville is delicious. It was not yeah. even a barrel pick of Pikesville. It's delicious, like hundred and eleven proof or something like that. I, mean, it was, I don't know. It, maybe the I think Will is, brought it up when we were doing our pick. He was talking about the different uh, differentiators, differentiations yeah. Yeah. between the, the, the mash two. bills yeah. and the age. I don't them. know what it is either. Um, I think I'd have to agree with you though that I like the Pikesville better. I do and too. I don't yeah. know like what it is about it. I think it's less. I don't. know, Maybe it's more spicy. I don't know. I well, mean, I, I think it's. I think the Pikesville is actually a higher rye content in it. I'm pulling. I I'd think to it's, it it's got to be something about it, like a sweetness there. Like maybe there's more corn involved or something like that. But, mm. but like I just, I don't know what it is. I just between like I did a lineup myself, and I even tried to, you know, I even tried to have Kylie kind of Look introduce up, them to me, uh, blind, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, no, nah, this one's definitely Pikesville, hundred percent. And yeah, it's right. one of those that can definitely stick out if you're putting them side by side. I think my problem with doing blinds is. You have to do a double blind and side by side because if you don't, then, I mean, what do you, you have nothing to compare it to, right? Well, like, I mean, yeah, but like the real problem I feel like in Rye is that there's, there, there's a lot of them that wind up north of a hundred and they're not really like marketing themselves as like a barrel proof rye or whatever. You right. know what I mean? Like, like Pikesville, I don't know if they're, they identify as a barrel proof rye. Now, the Rossville one was a barrel proof single barrel rye, but like, we were talking earlier about getting your hands on that Jack Daniels, right? And I'm, I'm excited because I mean, uh, ever since, uh, we tried that, you, you came over, we, we tried that, uh, old foe, mm -hmm. that batch one of that barrel proof rye that they got. And I got my hands on it. Yeah. Then I, I sip that stuff very sparingly because it's, it's so good. Oh man. Um, that's when you don't want to let go. Like if, if you, you just gotta make it savor. The only other two, well, I haven't even had the one of the two, but I'm putting it on a pedestal before I've even tried it, which is wrong to do. But we were at half liter that night, and we tried the Parkers, 
rye, and oh. that was part. Yeah, man, all those, all those. That's p- actually Heaven Hill too. Right? Most, of, most, yeah. of, most of those Parker's Heritage is really, really hit. Um, especially Me that too. rye. The yeah. last, last few ryes that they've done have been just I absolute got, banging. I, I know I've had some, um, like but I just run. haven't gotten real big into a lot of things that they have put out in the last couple of years. Yeah, I don't okay. know why. I just have so many other things that we drink and try, like. And I mean, I, I, if you look at price too, I mean, to get into yeah. to step into it is really it's it's a high. It's what I mean. I don't know what's the MSRP like of one, it's like one thirty nine, one forty yeah. or something. And then I mean, you're looking at the secondary five five hundred bucks, right? All right. If so it's the, the, the big minute, difference is the Rossville, or I'm sorry, the Pikesville has more malted barley. So the Rossville is a blend of MGP fifty one rye, forty five corn, four percent malted barley. And it's also blended with a 95 rye, 5 malted barley. The uh, Pikesville, though, is 51 rye, 39 corn, 10% malted barley. So way less. Yeah, so it's so a higher malted less. content. And that one's made at the Bernheim. So Rossville is actually a blend. I wonder if that was the shit they lost. Did you see that? when they, it's, it's a oh, blend they the fire, of yeah, or the, fire. The, the So they're, it's, it's a blend still, from MGP. Yeah. Yeah. Rossville is. So, um, so that's the difference. Pikesville is is well, Bernheim all is Bernheim, pretty good. I mean, and I Rossville like is MGP. Bernheim's so. pretty good. Yeah, that, that would that would make sense. That I would like it more than not saying MGP is lesser. I just would find probably more delight in something that came from Bernheim. Yeah, yeah, me too, um, me too. Except for I want that Weller. creek juice. Well, wow. okay. Now, so speaking speaking of weeded, so you mentioned a lot of weeded earlier. Yeah. What's what's your like? What's your goats? Give me like your top three weeded. Mm. I mean, we know Jeff the Creed's up there with that. Right that, now, it's got to be Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no, right now, I think number one would probably have to be Whiskey Acres, um, because they're like predominantly weeded mash bill. Um, Is it this one? The we're getting ready to try yeah. here in a bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Gr- jump into it whenever you guys number are ready. Number two, to. I'm still nursing. Larceny, Larceny uh, Barrel Proof. B the B the one twenty three the A one twenty three and the C nine twenty three. Yep. I, I was gonna say probably s- I think the C nine twenty three. C nine twenty three was my favorite. Two. What was the first one that they had? Was it a A five one five or something? Like what, that, was it their fir- the f- Larson's first barrel proof was a banger. I don't yeah. remember. I'd have to look it up. Got, I think I might have a bottle. I've heard a lot of people say much of it. I loved it. I've heard a lot of people say they didn't like the A one twenty four this year. We tried it. At yeah, the track. we said the A124 was actually it was pretty it? good. Yeah, but I still think the C923 was better. I don't know what a third would be. No, What's I'm sorry. I think we had no the Weller 523 there? out there. Yeah, no I, for Weller. Huh? The only I Weller I no. like is uh, William uh, Larue. William Larue is fantastic. All the other Wellers, I'm not a fan of. Oh, shots fired. Uh, sorry, <laughs> this man knows me. Um, sorry, it's okay to be wrong, Garrett. That's <laughs> oh, okay. That's what my school teacher told me. I know. I know. Um, if your opinion is different than mine, then you're wrong. <laughs> exactly. I don't like you. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, there was a hundred percent messed up really easily. Do you remember the hundred percent wheat that we had? Which one was that? It's yeah. been a while. I don't know. I drink a lot of whiskey. So you I don't remember. drink a lot. I, I rely Somebody on you guys to in. tell me what yeah, I drink. Somebody brought it in. It wasn't a brand that we have here. I will say I'm not sold. I'm not sold on Rebel. Very, very much. Rebel yeah. Yell. I've only had it once. Or, that Rebel Yell, they went away, now they're just Rebel, right? I stopped drinking them after they uh, took the yell away. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to yell. Just out of uh Yeah. Come on, of, man. Billy Idol. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. But Weller Foolproof, Store Picks, I, I have a hard time saying no to those. I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for those. I do like those, but... Um, can't say I've had any Store Picks. I, I guess... I, I've maybe, had the, maybe uh maybe we can crack that uh one of the few I've got. All right. I've got I've got three left. I think maybe three and maybe even this could be two would be the soft red wheat from uh holiday. Ben holiday. That actually is really good wheater. It's sweeter than a lot of the other ones. I haven't had it yet, but I guess I'll give uh Jeff the, the red Creed wheat gives you a little bit of the spice vote. of rye. <laughs> it does. But it's still wheat. It yeah. reminds me of the Barton 1792 sweet wheat, uh, but it's better. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the sweet wheat. I will say I hate regular larceny. It's definitely cheaper. I, I'm not a fan of regular larceny. Regular larceny, larceny no. is, uh, no. And for those that like it, again, it's an affordable bottle. So like, You remember the remember that one time when Bobby was talking about Kentucky Owl confiscated? 
Oh, it's and, he, and, he, and he dumped it down the toilet on a video on purpose. Hey, it cleans the toilet, man. It's great. <laughs> that's Guess a, a creep you'll leave a funk on your toilet, listening. but that's fine. <laughs> Just a red line. Um, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I, nobody said uh, on their weeded stuff. Of course, we haven't gotten to you guys yet, but Bernheim. I mean. I like Bernheim. It's okay. It's very okay. It just depends. Yeah. It has to be. It has to be a special wheat for me to like it. I mean, if like, you're if you're if you're not talking price, I mean, if you're looking at, if you're looking at price point, I mean, what, what's Bernheim a thirty dollar bottle? Yeah, easily. Yeah. yeah. That's no, a, no price point. Again, that's that's why I like going into some of these things not knowing how much they are because I'll try I'll try a new brand. I'll be like, oh, okay, this was this was fine. And I look at it and it's you know one hundred and twenty dollar bottle and I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. That's not that fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. I mean, price definitely comes I mean, into it. We, we, I, I did a, a massive, um, we had like eight guys, and we all, we had a big scoring list, and everyone brought a bottle, and on the scoring was, you know, taste, um, nose, everything else, and then the price was all factored in there. Right. And so, you know, we tried to make it under $100, but if, you know, if the bottle was a $30 bottle versus a $100 bottle, that kind of depended on the score. Um, and so that was kind of a fun way to do it. Um, but I mean, you know, I mean, once you get price in there, it's, I don't know. It changes your perspective. It, it, it changes perspective. the perspective a yeah. lot, you know, because, yeah. okay, if, if I'm going to enjoy a pour and I'm dropping it, you know, $115 on a, on a pour at a nice restaurant, you know, how much am I going to enjoy it? How much do I want to enjoy it? I've had a lot of $115 pours that I've absolutely hated. And I'm like, yeah, God, I'm shooting myself for buying this. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I, we always talk about this too, benchmark foolproof. It definitely goes, it definitely punches Solid. above its weight. But mm-hmm. if that was a hundred dollar bottle, I might think different, but I know I spent fifteen ninety nine on that bottle and you, it's absolutely delicious. Are you calling it benchmark foolproof? Or are you calling it baby stag? Don't, like call, baby, eh, don't, don't, call, don't call baby stag. Don't call baby stag. Don't, don't call baby don't stag. Don't call baby stag. I mean, I, I get why people say that, but you know, it, it's a different animal. Yeah, no that that it's I also remember affordable. I remember that Facebook live I think it was yeah where that was marketed as such yeah and uh, <laughs> I was like what is he talking about yeah it's I mean come on I mean, if you think about it it's smart it's not it's not right it's smart it's, yeah it is not right but it's it, smart it just gives the distillery the option to raise the price to forty bucks instead of hey nailed he, it hey he <laughs> dropped it I I did I didn't Damn. do it this time <laughs> this shot is great right, shot right out of my mouth look at you you haven't <laughs> dropped shit today bum, bum, bum. nice so the seven year whiskey acres yes. This has the soft red winter wheat. So it's 75 okay. corn, uh, 15% uh, soft red winter wheat, 10% malted barley. So whenever you're done with this port, yeah, into jump that into one. that. So, where's, uh, where, where's that Ben Holiday from? Uh, ben Holiday is out in Missouri. Uh, yep. Missouri? Missouri? Yeah. Yep. I couldn't tell you the city, but it's in yeah. Missouri. Uh, ben Holiday is one that, like, Jack, he, he what's how you pronounce his last name? Bedigu? Bedigu, yeah. Um, the Hood Somalia. The Hood Somalia. Um, he actually thinks oh, that that Ben is going to yeah, be know, the he, it's going to be the the next big brand across the U.S. Oh, yeah. I'll tell and you, honestly, so, I'm not thinking he's wrong. Bourbon Bourbon Lore, you guys are familiar yep. with them? Yeah, they, yeah. They did a right here. Pass that way. they did that. Uh, they did their pick. That was really smart. I mean, they bring the lore behind everything. I talked to the guy behind that, and he said that was his whole whole idea. I know that sold out like ASAP. Oh yeah. So I've I've had a few of the. I always i I get angry with myself because I can't spell it. H o l l o a d a d o a d a y a d o. I don't know. My yeah. spell check always messes it up, and I get mad when I'm typing in. Yep. I like that. I've only had a few of them. Um, I need I need to I need to go back and revisit them because I think that'd be one that I would. I like the enjoy. fact that they they released two regular releases at they call it Rick House proof, yeah. 120 proof ish. And I like the fact they put it out that way. If you want to prove it down, prove it down yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, too many of these small distilleries start releasing stuff at 80, 90 proof, trying to hit the masses. And if you don't catch the bourbon crowd, you're done. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the, that's one of our things with, um, with West Fork we've had before is they're trying to I'm release so glad you said that. a lot of stuff. But I will tell you, we've tried some of their stuff at Castring. It's absolutely so delicious. The higher rye that's like 128 right well, now. Well, we is... were there. We tried we tried a uh, Bloody Butcher Wheat. I was just going to say that. And it was it, it was so my good. winner of the day. It was absolutely freaking delicious. I think it was high up with that one. No, you, your, your beef with it is not the corn itself. It's like you said, it's a moldy tasting corn. Oh, yeah. It's because it's, it's moldy. Not, it's, it's not, not the corn butcher. itself. So we were at Woodhat. 
and um, Gary brought out a, a cooler of Bloody Butcher that had started molding. And he said, smell this. And I immediately smelled it. I'm like, Jeff the Creed. He's like, <laughs> you're not wrong. And everybody that smelled it said, that smells like Jeff the Creed. And he's like, yeah. He said, some some distilleries will still use the corn. And some distilleries, which he was talking about Jeff the Creed, will use it specifically because of that funk note in it. But when he did his Bloody Butcher, he was making sure it was clean, dry, Bloody Butcher, and it tasted totally different and so very delicious. So what you're delicious. saying is it's like a blue cheese Bloody Butcher. Oh, corn. it's disgusting. Well, it's just like chicken oh. nuggets. Like, there's a certain ratio <laughs> of human fingers that are allowed to go in the batch. So, like, you know, there's a ratio of... Shout out, Wendy's. Shout Wait, out, that's Wendy's. Chili. That's <laughs> chili. Shout, shout out, Saucy Nugs. Saucy Nugs. <laughs> oh, my God. But the... The, the Whiskey Acre stuff is great, too, because, like, everyone says, you know, grain to glass. Their their motto is seed to spirit because yeah. they have uh, a master farmer and master distiller. So they are literally propagating their own seeds to grow. Can you buy it around here? Is this something that all oh, yeah. comes Yeah, to? it's yeah. now in Indiana. Yeah. yeah. Shout yep. out Indiana yep. Small Batch. Um, yeah, Indiana Small Batch is distributing it. Right now, I don't know what liquor stores, but I would guarantee town spirits there in uh, uh, Hamilton Town Center area. Should have their product because that's where it usually the gas goes first. station store. Yes, that's okay. the one. That's the one. Yep. No, they they got that store over by Geist now next to um, my favorite butcher shop, Moody's. Yeah, I think they're there too. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they Sometimes they, they actually favorite. like he was talking about. They've actually, I mean, they're master farmers, and um, the the master farmer. I can't remember his name. Do you remember his name? It was somebody in Jamie's family. I believe. Yeah, he. Um, yeah, Ichabob. Ichabob Crane. He actually, um, he actually um, merged corn from Italy and Min- Minnesota, Minnesota, yep. and created a new corn varietal. And actually, it was it was the sweetest corn that they had out there. They had sweet corn fields. They had this field, and they had all their corn fields around it. The birds and deer would not go anywhere but that one crop because of the corn. So they had to get drones and run everything off a lot of stuff. But we taste the white dog of this stuff, and it's probably the best white dog I've ever tasted in my life. It's so a hybrid. It's going to be yeah. aging. It's going to be aging for another four or five years, probably before they're actually releasing it. But it's going to change the game for them. They're going all in with it, and they were so worried because they're like, "This is so much more expensive. We're going to have to raise our prices." And we're like, "What are you going to raise your prices to?" He's like, "Well, you know, our casting is probably going to be around that seventy to seventy-four dollar range." I'm like, "Done." Go. <laughs> We're in. It's We're in. Com- that's pretty common these days, too. Yeah, but I mean, 74 bucks for a cast strength bourbon, a really good bourbon, is nothing anymore. So Far- Farm crafted. Is that a new Is that a new term? Farm crafted? Um, I was oh, right. Like a big old they're coming up with it. Yeah, they're doing it. They're doing it. Yep, yep. It is Jim. Jim is the master farmer. It's Jamie's Jim. father. So Jamie still knows a lot about, uh, you know, he's part owner. He's... Uh, well versed in the farming industry as well. I would well, say so. that would be a good place for you guys to go check them out. They're they're doing things a little bit differently. It's unorthodox. It's very unorthodox, but they're super nice guys. The master distiller there is fantastic. I mean he, he he's doing some crazy stuff. They're they're all doing great great stuff there. So if once you go there, because I know you're going to go there. <coughs> when you go there, Whiskey Acres. When I go there, yes. when you go there, um, it doesn't look like you're in the right place. Because there's not... It looks like a farm. It looks like... Yeah, that's all it is. It's a farm. You know, you have a nice, you know, pole barn in the front that's like their tasting room. Event Which center. is a really beautiful tasting room. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. But their rick houses are reused, like, World War II hangers. Grain silos. And grain and silos. Yeah. So all their barrels are stacked in old grain bins. Yeah. Super cool. It yeah. is very cool. It's a cool tour. Which, honestly, if you think about that, too, being the metal barns, you're in northern Illinois, just, like... 45 minutes west of Chicago, you're probably going to be able to get a little bit more of that, that heat transfer in a metal barn as opposed to just a regular <clears throat> rick house up in northern Illinois. Well, too, and some of that, it reflects most of the heat. So, like, it it still is very temperamental with, like, the heat fluctuation. Mm-hmm. So, yes, there is a little bit more heat fluctuation. During but the also summer, it, it's going to get it warmer, but... Yeah, yeah. Most of that. Yep. Which so, is kind of the point. Was it was it Eric Jansen that got you put Eric on the Eric Jansen, yes, yes. 100%. That's from his, not far from his hometown. Shout yeah, out like Eric, who yeah, will be out. in attendance tomorrow with yes, us. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. Yeah, so he got us hooked up with Whiskey Acres, got us some tastings. Uh, we went up there with Small Batch to kind Honestly, kinda... he's 100% the reason why oh, 100%. Small Batch has Whiskey oh, yeah. Acres now. Yeah, yeah. He is the guy. Yep. So we will also be at 
uh, West Fork in, I guess, like a week. Holy shit, that's the next Saturday. We will be at West Fork for... No, we won't. We'll be at Old 55. The 21st, though. Oh. Yeah, we'll I'm be at Old 55 20. on the okay. 20th. Okay, I'm, I got On the 21st, I'll we'll talk be about at the... West Fork. Yeah, well, yeah. I will be at West Fork with Small Batch and Spencer Lee's. Oh, good for you. Uh, with ARPO. It is uh, Alliance of Responsible Pet Ownership. Some nonprofit pet yeah. thing. Um, good deal. Sean White works for RNDC, not the snowboarder. Uh, just a guy that works for RNDC. Uh, he might his be wife the works for ARPO. Um, come out. It might be the guy yeah, that actually is a snowboarder. It could yeah. be. I'm going to be very surprised if it is, but I don't think it is. Um, we'll be sampling some of the some of the uh, whiskey acres, maybe some Jay Maddenly stuff. Um, just kind of pouring it up. So nice. cool. we'll be sampling some of that stuff. Have you guys done any picks with West Fork yet? I did. We I did an influencer pick uh, a couple years back okay. with uh, – with West Fork, they just had a bunch of random people in and ask for the was green it? Oaxacan. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. So I'm I'm supposed to be doing a triathlon next Sunday, and I've got to chug a bottle of West Fork while I'm before, during, and after. Heck yeah! So we'll see how that. What goes. are they going to give you, like the house bourbon? Well, I've got they they gave me a few different bottles to choose from, so I've got a bunch of them in my house, and I got their bloody butcher's pretty good. I got hey, like I, the regular bloody. Hey Blake, get him a get him a a, a sample bottle of the bloody butcher wheat. We'll see, we'll we'll see how this we'll see how this goes. I gotta <laughs> I still have to I gotta swim bike run my way through all this. So okay, maybe you're not checking while you're proof. swimming. Uh, well, so my my plan is to have them toss. I'm gonna, it's in the canal uh, downtown. So I'm gonna super s- clean body of water. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. swim, and if they toss me a bottle, I can I can chug out of it, and then no ID. Isn't there a ton <laughs> of like foliage in the in the canal that you're going to swim through? Foliage. A uh, few cars. It's, they it, cleaned it out a couple years ago. Well, yeah, it's funny. It doesn't so they, have they, all those like. Well, they, they so they they dredge, they dredge it every three four years, and it's like they find like wheelchairs, and bowling balls, cars, and cars, cars yeah. that are driving on the ice, yeah. all the all the all the, all the, all the bird scooters and everything else. So. <laughs> I bet they find a lot of the murder weapons. It should be should be a good uh, should be a good time. <laughs> but yeah, so they they've got a bloody butcher. That I should try. Their bloody butcher is actually really good. I meant to bring a lot of the stuff today. Yeah. I had a Dude. whole backpack full of shit, and I left it at home. Oh oh yeah. We got like 15, 20 bottles oh, yeah. back there. We'll get to that. Stuff. We'll finish this. We can do that. Aren't yeah. you uh, sponsored by um, Elmo's for this? No, this is a West Fork sponsorship. Oh, Ooh. so well, you've been practicing a lot in a in, oh, yeah. in, 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 in the Elmo gear. In the yeah. Elmo when gear. is this? Nice. When is this? This uh, is next Sunday. Next. Uh, oh, the twenty first. I'm tra- I'm training right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> We're conditioning. We're conditioning. I'm conditioning for my liver. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I took, I took two months off, and now I'm back. Here we go, baby. <laughs> yeah. So that's never a good question. We are back because I know you. I uh, I know you drink a lot. Yeah. Um. You went off. You were off for seventy five days. Do? Well, I I, I <laughs> almost. I, I didn't make it. I okay. Was, I was I was trying to do the seventy five hard. Um. No drinking. Um, made it to seventy four and said I made fuck it, this. Well, no, I made it to about sixty, and I was like, okay, that's still two months. Dude. I said if if anybody if any if I, like if I have like a, a whiskey opportunity or or you know I, I do things for different restaurants and other things and. I, I got to shoot a thing for 1933, and it was, you know, I was trying to promo one of their, it was like the, the bourbon, whatever, the bourbon, National Bourbon Day. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I had a bunch of fantastic, I had like the Will Purple Tops and, you know, some of the Heaven Hills. Pot and still. All this other stuff, and I was like, well, I can't just fake like I'm drinking it. So, yeah, Ouch. the pot still. <laughs> no. they, had, they had some of that Jeff the Creed uh, six-year weeded, which was really good. That so, it is, it's okay. So anyway, I, I, yeah, I got to do It's better. That. I was like, this is, so I started, and that was kind of my downfall, and then it just kind of all tumbled out of Open control from there. Yeah. But so, I mean, got two months off in, so I took, in your I took two months off. That's a lot. And that's a now, lot. Now, we're, now we're back into That's cool, it. man. Yeah, I yeah. take two days here and there. I did a dry January, but I got to like the hours. 22nd or something like that. It's, you know, it's, it's good to just make sure you're not dependent. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Logan. Uh, he's doing the 75 hard right now. Yeah, so. yeah. He had banked up a bunch of content before July to be able to continually post through July without having to break the cycle. I'll tell the you what, cycle. that's a lot, that's of, hard. It. That's a lot yeah. of it about social media. Like, you know, I, I started dating this new girl, and her boyfriend gets on me, and he's like, I don't fucking get it. Like, you're out there drinking to the pool every day and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, bro, I'm up at 4 in the morning. Like, I'm training at 5 a.m. Wait, what yeah. the fuck did you just say? My my girlfriend's brother. I thought you, you said, said go- I st- girlfriend's boyfriend. I, my <laughs> My girl, my sorry, I've had a few drinks. My girlfriend's, my girlfriend's, my it's girlfriend, an open my relationship. My, my girlfriend's brother got really, got really upset with me. My he, girlfriend's dad. 
So he, <laughs> he thought he thought I was out drinking every day, and I was like, I don't I don't think you understand like content creation. Like you know, I, most of my posts come out at six a.m. So it's, I don't think you understand how much I drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sorry, Mister Boyfriend. So we'll 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 do I'll, I'll I'll batch a bunch of content, you know, and then I yeah, can slow release yeah. it throughout the week. So I'm not I'm like. As as many people may be disappointed in this, I'm not drinking every day. I, mean, I drink a lot, but I don't drink every. When I drink, I drink a lot. But so, I, but I don't drink every day. We'll cut so, that part out. This, <laughs> is this your career, or do you have no, 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 okay, no? Okay, I'm a personal trainer. <laughs> okay, that's why. I, I, that's why I was thinking. He's a liver trainer. Okay. I've liver been a trainer. client yes. before. Yeah, he's he whipped me into shape. So I do. Nice. I do. Uh, I have. I own, a, I own a personal training studio. So drinking and eating in excess, like. Go Good. We in, need to chat. Go hand in hand. So yeah, um, but yeah, my thighs are rubbing. <laughs> some some girls like that, but it's a. <laughs> it's, I have no gap left. It's the, the thigh gap is very important. It's, <laughs> but a, a lot of people see it and they don't they don't understand the you know so some of it's parody you know I, I re, you can reuse you can repurpose a lot of content right. Um, there's there, there there's a lot that goes into it, but. I mean, for the most part, you, if if you're smart with it, you can batch content. Because I'm not I'm not waking up every morning at six a.m. And, and chugging. Right, I'm right. Not, I'm not doing a lot of this stuff. All like this could be during COVID. You could probably get away with that. Well, during well during COVID, I did because I didn't have a job. <laughs> right, right. But, um, you know, for as 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 far as all this stuff goes, pass me know. that seven, Rob. There we go. I'll get into it. Pass me la por favor. Yeah, what he said. Punta de la Puebla. Yes, that's. T- uh, this is 100% wheat? No, no, no. no this yeah, yeah. is 75 corn, okay. 15, and 10. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Soft, 15 soft red. Well, and that's one thing. You know, we, we talk about this on the show a lot because, and I'm sure you hear it all the time, someone tastes grain, and a lot of people, first thought is, oh, it's young. Mm-hmm. And um, what they're doing is they're actually spotlighting the grain. They want you to taste the grains because that's obviously the unique part of their whiskey. I got a lot of corn on this. You a do, lot, yeah. But you can taste their. But you can also tell the fact that's seven years old, and you can still taste the grain in it. Yeah, it's, it's not, not young. It's not lost it's the purposeful. grain notes, and it's very purposeful. So, I like what they're doing. I like the fact that some of these smaller distilleries are starting to starting to figure out that grain forward is actually a good thing. It doesn't have to be a young thing. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> That's a good t-shirt. Pro grain. Pro grain. This is my crop top. Mm-hmm. It's my whiskey acre shirt. <laughs> yeah. That might've got cut out too. Who knows? <laughs> so with, you know, batching content too, like we do the same thing. I mean, most of the reels and shorts that I post shorter, like the reposts and remixes, um, they're oh. just cuts out of the podcast. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, we'll cut 30 to 45 seconds out of something that we say stupid on the podcast. And then every Sunday night I'll post, you know, the week's worth of content for YouTube. Yeah. Because we're leaning pretty heavy into YouTube. Instagram's just a, just another thing, you yeah. know, it's just to get people, you know, get their attention into it. But um, it, it is hard. It's, it's hard to do that. It's but, uh, the, 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 the creative process behind that is it's very interesting and, um, it's, it's been a fun ride and it's interesting with just the way the, I don't want to say that I understand the algorithm, but the way that the algorithm changes from daily, you know, they want, oh, they, they want certain things, they push certain things and I'll have stuff that I'm like, Oh, this is going to hit. And then, you know, I've got 5,000 views on it. I'm like, damn it. That, you know, didn't really hit. But again, I'll take stuff, uh, you know, I've, I'll, I'll repost stuff that I did two years ago and I'll put a funny caption over it or something like that. And, and it, it blows up and i'm like great that was easy so it's funny because a lot of times when i'm not drinking that's when my content like numbers just skyrocket really and and, And i think you're at a point too to where like you don't have to do the same thing over and over no i I don't and and a lot the thing is a lot of times even my friends and family they're like jesus are you okay like like we're worried about you and i'm like i'm sober man (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, not right now, but like, yeah. <laughs> but at that point, but at that point, that was, that point, that was every so, day, but today, yeah. And at the same time, if you also look at the time that I'm posting at 6 a.m., you know, it's not. I'm not drinking at 6 a.m., man. Yeah, like, yeah. look, it's it's six yeah. o'clock in the morning, and the sun is behind me. Like, what the fuck? You like, yeah. yeah. Do you guys yeah. know how the sun works? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, come on. But you know, with Instagram, like that algorithm is ridiculous. Oh, I mean, it it changes weekly, daily, like, yeah, and it just pushes people down. Mm-hmm. But one of your favorite areas, I feel like, is actually fighting 
not fighting, but but uh, indulging with the uh, the comments thread. <laughs> I some love some it. of those I comments, warriors, like you said before, yeah. you can put anything in a keyboard and type it in, but you know i actually i i embrace that because i've got a lot of people like alcohol is a poison and blah 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 and i'm like well yeah it is but so thanks to your post you're pushing this out to more people that <laughs> will see that you know and then like you know if you, you you realize that if you comment on this post you're going to get more alcohol related posts yes so I, I i appreciate your your uh just respond with hashtag fyp no, it's, it's, <laughs> so a lot of so I mean I called out a guy today. He was like, "What is this shit?" And I was like, "Well, this is a post of a, a lady dancing, and she's doing this." And I put the caption over it, and that's that's exactly what this is. So I, don't know, I, I, I like to call it the clowns, and the, and it's God, I don't know. You know, again, I'm not promoting underage drinking. I'm not pro- promoting no. you know too excessive drinking. I mean, I love drinking in excess, but again, I know my limits, and I'm I've got an Uber. Home, everything else like that. All the, all Thank the good, you, Gary. All the good responsible, all the good responsible Garrett's stuff. Uber. <laughs> yes, yes. But it's like you know, if if it's not for you, then then scroll on by. If exactly. Not, if, yeah. Half the, half the fare, twice the distance. If if you want, if you want to comment, then then do it. It's only going to boost my algorithm. So I don't, love it. I don't don't know. tell people that. that no, I, I I do tell them. Please, that. I, please I call post. Them out. Please hate me. It's great. I do. Oh, we hate, love it. The hate's the best part. The <laughs> hate is the best part. Hate from Australia. You know, the funny thing is, usually the, My the, favorite one. the hate comments, uh-huh. you don't even have to comment because your followers will start commenting well, on the hate they comment. They do, but I, 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 like to, I like to shout them out, and I like to give them the spotlights and do like a little clown circle of the <laughs> fucking bum, bada, da, ba, 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 the music in the background. And um, I think because it, it only makes them mad, more mad, and then they yeah. comment again, and then it just keeps it going, and I'm like... Thanks for two million views, man. Yeah, this is, this you're is, you're this awesome. Is, this is working well. <laughs> so That's on great. on Wednesdays, uh, me and Logan are gonna start doing a live on Instagram. Yeah, for like uh, what we're drinking or just mm-hmm. hanging out, having a good time. You should join us. I don't have time, man. <laughs> I work throughout the week. It's it's like well, we'll do it at six a.m. when you're free, <laughs> dude. <Okay. laughs> no, I got I got a great idea. Between clients, you have him and Logan yeah. pumping weight. Drinking whiskey. I'll say, if you guys want to, if you guys want to come in, you can come into my gym. We can pump some iron. We can do a little podcast. We can that that that'd be so much fun. Okay, I can do that. And then my that'd we'll do fun. that. My my other clients throughout the day will have such a much better workout. So I, be, okay, I'll all right. So I'll talk to Logan because he's in that seventy five hard, and I'm in the four hour hard. So yeah. four hour. <laughs> I'll hey. tell you, what, if you have a erection lasting more than four hours, you should definitely contact. <laughs> yeah. <me. laughs> They, they stopped answering my phone calls, actually. <laughs> I try to so take about eight hours like off their day TikTok, from drinking. <laughs> it's usually sleep. I try and take some time off drinking. Yeah, that's a, oh, that's, a, that's a good one. I try and take some time off drinking yeah. at least eight hours a day. Exactly. That's me every day. That's solid. Every day. It's fasting. Good for you, Rob. It's fasting. That's good for solid. you. I'm yes. proud of you. Thank you. I well, hope thank you know that. I know you are. I took that button off, too. but You're my, oh, Yeah, you did. It was the Mr. <laughs> Rogers. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I hope you know that. <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you think of the whiskey acres then? That's good. Tell us your thoughts. Again, it's very. I think it's very. It's grain forward, um, which is nice. I, again, I think the the backstory leads a lot into it. So that's you gotta hard, go talk to him. That's the hard thing too. Like you were talking earlier about that, where you're where you just get blinds mm-hmm. and you try it and you're like, I'm not a big fan. Yeah. But then you have the brand show up and they mm-hmm. tell you the story and you yeah. get to know them. Now all of a sudden you have a relationship and you're like. Okay, I appreciate this yeah. more, and I feel like a lot. Of, that's what happens with a lot of people when they go out and they go to local distilleries mm-hmm. and they try their stuff and they fall in love with the distillery. Yeah, it may not be just the juice; it may be the relationships. And part and of that's that, a good thing. A lot of it is too. And I, I again, I try not to shit on anybody. Like nope. I know, I know Jeff the Great's gotten a hard, a hard knock today. <laughs> eh, we give him crap, but we still give him a shot. But 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 again, you know, there's there's. There's families, there's people behind that. There's people that that's jobs depend on that. So, and there's people that like it. Again, I've got I've got a buddy that's I I trust and I respect his opinion. I don't agree with him all the time, but he loves it. He loves yeah. he loves that bloody butcher corn funk that yep. Jeff is putting out. And he's the one that you know because they sent me, Jeff that sent me the bottle of the six year weeded. I was like, man, I I I haven't really been in love with any of their other stuff. But he's like, just give this a try. Yeah. And so he goes set it to the side, and you know I set it to the side, and I I. I did enjoy it, so it's Good. like I don't want to. I don't want to just put like a blanket hate out there for nope. anybody. No, 
So um, well, again, Starlight. I hate I hate the Amarana, and we're going there tomorrow. <laughs> but I love Starlight. Yeah. I love the people. I love a lot yeah. of their products. But they've got. I don't so have to like things. everything they make, and yeah. that's okay. And you don't have to. And that's the, again, that's that's part of it. You don't have to love everything they do. And exactly. I, again, that's I. You know, I've got I've got so many friends that will do tastings, and I'm like, dude, give me your honest opinion. If yeah. you don't like, we can agree on we both love. We both love the Heaven Hill 10 year. Yeah. I, you like the Heaven Hill 20. And you don't. Corn Ford, I, I don't like it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, so it's 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 just one of those like. That's the beauty of this. Yeah. I wouldn't mind it's revisiting like, an opinion on. We don't have to not. We don't have to like everything. And, yeah. You know, it's like Stag. Yeah. You know, I love Stag. I love George T. I like Juniors. I like the new Stags. I like all of it. Yeah. But some people don't. You know what? That's okay. That's okay. Don't yeah, buy it. That's okay. Yeah. You know, vote with your dollars. It's easy. It's very easy. That's yeah. That's 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 a big thing. Vote with your dollars. Yep. Exactly. Yep. It's so we've done a handful of stag picks. Um, you know, talking about you know the double blinds. I want to get your bottle, oh, a bottle of that pick of yours, a stag pick. Yeah, I, uh, I need to, I need to find a way to get a bottle. I'm sure he's got a few whole right. held back. I don't even have a bottle. <laughs> Damn it! Well, you need to get two. I'll, one for I'll, you. I'll get a couple. All um, right. All right. It was a fun day, but um, but you know, I, I've done you know a, a handful of stag picks where we do you know batch six, eight, nine, twelve, whatever oh, it is. Blind. Yeah, and it's yeah. like you know we're doing four or five of them, and every yeah. time it's like, oh my god, that was the best one. It's usually again the last one because because mm-hmm. that's the best one. But then you change. You remember? But then you change up <laughs> you change up the order, and you're like, well, shit, you know. Now that's and, my and, favorite. That was it, a wild night. But it's basement. such it's such it's such high proof that you're like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and they're all they're all so good too. So it's hard to they're all my babies. That's a weird thing to say. That was a wild night in your basement, bro. <laughs> no, like we yeah. did we did a blind of like, tarps what, on the six, wall. Six of them, <laughs> six of yeah. them at least. Like, yeah. So you're doing six six stag barrel uh, barrel strength, you know, picks. And I would like that because I think a lot of the stag juniors that we've tried were like some were really good and some were really bad. So like I, I would love to do a blind of like six or seven of them together. Because they're so freaking good. It's 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 so interesting and and yeah. You brought the God. truth. So I'll tell you what we did a um, I I, I love W O W. I love W O W. But I did a twenty one. I know that's, you said it's one of your favorites. I did a twenty one blind. Now granted, it was a fresh it was a fresh crack right off the bat, and I was like, man, this is not hitting. This yeah. is not hitting. It wasn't till stag twenty one. No, no, no. W O W. Was that when? Oh, we were at gotcha. Half okay. Uh, no, no. Well, no, no, no. Um, I, well, the last few, last few W O Ws have been absolute bangers, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but I think I did a nineteen and a twenty and a twenty one, and I, for whatever reason, those didn't. They just didn't hit for me. And I think now, we killed a twenty. <laughs> so I, 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 I want to, yeah. I, I want to go back and revisit them because again, they're they're fresh and I, you know, yeah, let it get a little sit, air in there, let, let them sit yeah, out, let, let it air yeah. out and everything. So it's you know, wh- how how fair is it to judge it off the first? Right. And and what you what you have to eat, what you have to drink before that? And, <coughs> you know, these the the first two times I did it, they were you know the at least the last the, the twenty and the 21, 19, 20, 21, It was like nine in the morning. You know, I'd been out drinking the night before, hadn't had any breakfast. Well, and that's, like, that is a key that people need to realize is depending on what you ate that day, what you drank that day, mm-hmm. what time of day it yeah. is, you know, what mood you're in, your mood will change the the way you yeah. enjoy whiskey. Same way with cigars. It's like you, you keep track of that stuff because if you're in a shit mood and you walk in and you're like, oh, I want my mood to get better. I'm going to get a cigar and a bourbon. You're like, oh, those sucked. I'm like, well, no, your day sucked. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you're not going to enjoy anything no matter what you do now. But if you have to pay attention to that, you want some of this now? Pass that over. I'm going to kill right. this and then that. So Toss the, me one of them knuckles, too. This is the uh, this is the old Clifty 141 proof apple brandy finished in uh, bourbon barrels. Tink, 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 tink. The reason I got that one is because I'm down to about a bottle and a half of the other one right now. So, um, oh, here you go, bud. Yeah, toss me a knuckle sandwich. I sat down with him, if you don't mind. If you guys need another cigar, let me know. Appreciate you, man. Um, you but, yeah, th- so that was one that Dirk and I did. You know you know Dirk, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I would like to see see you and Dirk and, and us do some collaborative stuff together because I love I love the cause Dirk's doing. We're going to be down there next Saturday or up there in uh, Old 55 uh, promoting End of Watch Legacy Fund. Um, that was one of the picks that he and I did together, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's it's Alan Bishop apple brandy at 
hazmat level. It's and so freaking good. Since you bring up the event at Old 55, I will yes. preface that with it is not only end of watch for the officers. It's right. for all officers. It K-9's is. K-9 too, yes. Uh, so there was one in uh, Lawrence Township that just passed away. Justice was the K-9. Yes, yeah. Passed away off duty for uh, gastric issues. Yeah. Uh, f- you know, also known as bloat. Um, it's really unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, it, it happens. It can happen to any dog. Uh, just prim- primary in larger dogs, uh, yeah. bull mastiffs, shepherds, uh, things like that. But um, I'm glad to see they expanded that because I mean, the loss of, the loss of a, a dog in the line of duty or you know one that's actually working that level of uh, of duty in the first place, right? It has a similar impact. I mean, they're they're, they're family members. Yeah. You know, when these when the police the officer handlers, their families. Well, when the police officer is the handler for the dog, that dog is their dog. Right. When he gets home, it's the family pet. Oh, right. It's also has a job. And you know, when you lose one of those guys, you're not only losing a pet, you're losing you're losing someone that's actually out there fighting crime. The only on thing a daily I, think, I can basis. think of right now is Billy Madison. <laughs> when they're in story times, you got a dog. That's your that's your thing. That's your you dog. get off your ass, you find that fucking dog. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know that's that's a good point. I do like, like that he that that's expanded. That's perfect, and yeah. that's why we're going to be there with Spencer Lee selling dog treats because we're going to be selling dog treats, collars, leashes, pet accessories. Shout out! Um, shout out to me. Yes, um, I'm right here. And Jen. And Jen. And Jen. She does most she's of it. A, she's a she's a small part of it. It's fine. Small fuck. She. <laughs> Wait, she's flipping me off right she now. Is, she is the piece of the puzzle, but we're going to be selling dog treats and pet accessories yeah. uh, and donating all the proceeds to End of Watch okay, man. Uh, for that. So That's something, too. You know, yeah, come uh, hang out, man. We, we actually, I mean, you guys are you guys are a sponsor of the show. Um, I will say, if you guys are, are dog lovers, you need collars, you need leashes, you need dog treats, dog toys, all this kind of stuff, um, hit them up because... Almost, I think everything that you guys do, you have a proceed of that going towards, you know, um, rescues or Absolutely. whatever. You know, it's like this is going to be going towards um, the dogs in the line of duty. Cut me it, in on all that this too. money too. It's like you, re- reach out and and take care of that because that is a huge portion of our law enforcement community and also our families too. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, most of the stuff that we do goes towards the rescues that we work with. Uh, yeah. But when we find other instances where it benefits, you know, somebody like Dirk that's doing the right thing with no strings attached. Why not? You know, we're, we're going to help them out. Yeah. So, and if you're going to a freaking, you know, winery or, or other places and they're out there, buy their stuff, man. Come, Come on. Out. It's like... You know, it, Come they're, donate. They're, they're going everywhere. They're out there to farmers markets. They're out there at breweries and distilleries and we go everywhere. Churches. I mean, they're doing all yeah. kinds of stuff. Go out there and buy their stuff, man. Because I mean, everywhere. this stuff is is definitely helping more than just the fact that you're getting an amazing product in the process. Yeah. So, so I'm sure Dirk is probably already connected with who I'm thinking of. But if he's not, I really should get him in touch with uh, Jared. He's the uh, he was the one in charge of uh, officer. Uh, K9 Harley from the Fishers. Probably because I think Harley's uh, yes. on the coin. It, yeah. He's on the yeah. he's on the new it's a coin. Good friend of ours. Okay, okay. A real good dude. He yeah, had, actually, he does sure some he pretty has. pretty bitching woodworking of his own on the side too. Oh, awesome. oh perfect. Yeah. yeah, heck yeah. This uh, just tasted this. Wow, <laughs> that insane. It's terrible, right? You know the funny thing <laughs> is, over <laughs> we did that pick. So the pick was that one there. Which is a bourbon, and basically it's not bourbon finished. It's been resting in a bourbon barrel for I love that however many years weight. that was in there. Um, we had one that was a rye port. Those are the two we picked. The one that we wanted to pick was in a tequila barrel. Our our concern with that was, okay, we're now trying to educate people on brandy, and if we throw tequila in the mix, there's two things that are off-putting to some people. They may never try it. So eventually we're going to be doing a tequila barrel. Is this the higher too. proof one? That's the lower. lower that's proof, the 142. one. Yeah, lower proof. One forty one. Yeah, it's a lower one at one forty one. I love the tag on that. That's that's crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. Sierra, that she was a, she was huge into Rogue Fitness, and um, so we, you know they actually did the coins for the Rogue the Rogue weights on that one. That was a great job. And I think that's the cool thing with a lot of Dirk's picks. He does the coins or the badges or yeah. you know. So well, you're gonna get a cool commemorative piece with it. You are. So I've consulted with him a little bit about what ideas I might do for hours just for Ryan. Yeah. Um. So it's going to be a pretty bitchin' sticker, which 
I, you know, you've, you've... So let's bring this up again because this might be the point where we lost our footage earlier during the power outage. So we're doing this pick at Starlight tomorrow uh, to benefit your wife's yeah. cousin. Yeah. So which Ron... was an A10 loader. Yeah. He he staff sergeant Ryan Pritt. He worked with. Uh... Oh, you that. should do a coin like that. <laughs> That's bitching to hang on the bottle. <laughs> We have, could put have him that on there plane on the that. back with his picture on there. That would be a freaking amazing coin. So there's there's a, a ton of ideas. All you know, my wife's only uh, caveat is that she's got to be involved with it. She wants to be involved with the design of it. You know, good for her. So, uh, but yeah. So Ryan loaded a tens. I've got pictures of him. You know, loading rockets, bombs, whatever. I <laughs> I wish I was a little bit more well versed on the aircraft itself and what you know went into it, but. It shoots um, shit. Well, the only thing I do know is that they've tried to retire that aircraft like four times, and they just Burr. have to keep it We talked about <laughs> yeah. that. We talked about that on the Colin Bielek episode. Oh, yeah, so that's yeah. What, that's what Harmon said this morning when I talked to him on the phone was, well, you just go ahead and name it. That's fine. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, like Bert, you know, with like, you know, however many R characters, because there's a character limit, so however many characters we can fit in there is going to be mostly R's or whatever, but I think that'd be fun. Should be called the Never Die. Because they want to retire it. They do want to retire it's that plane. It's not going to. There's they've, no way. They've been using that plane forever, but it's too too uh, too functional. It sounds like America, and it puts the fear into our enemies. Yeah, when it flies over the house, <laughs> all I hear is, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is, yeah, so, a, that is an amazing aircraft. Oh, it's crazy. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to I'm gonna personally oh. donate probably... I'm going to say, depending on, you know, it's going to come down to how much it is drank at this event. There's a there's a Hope Gala annually for Mission 22 at the Biltwell in Indianapolis. I'd love it if all of you guys were, were there. When is that event? It's November something. I'm a piece of crap about okay. remembering dates. So <laughs> I as might soon have as you November get the date, please available. let me know so we can get on the day. I'd like to be down we'll there for We'll cover that for yes, sure. We'll, yeah, so we'll do there. a live event there. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I've gone the last three years, actually. I've seen a lot of cool things. Last year they had... Um, they had the Medal of Honor recipient, uh, the guy, I have such a hard time remembering his name and I hate that, but essentially the Forrest Gump guy is the best way to remember it because he is the guy that received the Medal of Honor for saving all those guys while being injured in Vietnam. The guy shutting my buttocks. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, Dad. Um, and you I guess, it. Uh, I guess he was a hell of a harmonica player. So he actually offered, uh, offered to auction off his harmonica uh because he was emceeing uh oh, the whole yeah. event that night or the keynote actually probably i think it was the keynote but he auctioned off his harmonica and i think it raised an, an additional like fifteen hundred dollars by itself that awesome night. that's so, awesome um and i believe uh just because their their liquor sponsor backed out this year one of the areas where they said you know kylie could try to work as a state ambassador was trying to source sponsorships for alcohol and stuff like that for the event even though being a veteran organization, you know, alcohol can be kind of a touchy subject. So um, they still need it, though, to serve at the event. So they'll generate proceeds. So I'm going to donate probably three or four bottle or cases of it for them to serve for a signature cocktail tonight or neat, however they want to do it. It'll be Biltwell bartender serving it. And then um, depending, maybe a case or two in the silent auction as well for, you know, like, hey, this uh, beautiful juice that you've been drinking tonight, you know, it's, if you like it, there's a case of it available for auction at the silent auction. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then... Um, and it's going to be a banger pick because we're all doing it. Yeah, I mean, so. this, the biggest part <laughs> of me getting people like yourselves on this is that, you know, I'm just a I'm just a Joe Blow in the bourbon world here in Indianapolis. You know, my name yeah, comes bullshit. up every now You have a great palate, buddy. I have a good palate, but uh, I do... Uh, I was... I hopped into a live on TikTok the other night and... Uh, I don't remember what her name, USMC, uh, Danielle. Danielle. Uh, I, I said, hi. And she said, one of the best beards in bourbon TikTok," And she commented on that right away. I was like, okay, well I've got something. Uh, <laughs> I have something, but you have a face for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> well, as much as Dan featured me in his, yeah. Uh, but, but, but that's, that's the whole point of what we're doing. So, um, you know, Harmon's a good spirit. He said, he had no quibs about uh, selling the bottles in his store when they're available for purchase. Good. That's uh, awesome. He had no quibs about selling them with the, uh, you know, with the tags and the stickers on them, you know, and yeah, uh, it'll tell a story. You Do know? you know, has he, has um, Jerdy told us anything about the age of the barrels yet? 
He told me a little bit. He said, uh, depending on how soon we were able to get out, there was one in particular that was a straight banger that, uh, and so I scheduled as soon as I possibly could. He inferred it should still be there, but something, okay. something that was, uh, double oaked into a, a French barrel that they paid a good deal of money for just to even procure. Yeah. Um, so that it's really good. So French oak. Well, and that, that's the nice thing about, you know, like starlight does a great job. Starlight buys barrels from all over the world all the freaking time. But the cool thing about that is you can actually reuse the barrels. So, you know, you can reuse the finishing barrels over and over and over, and you're still going to get a lot of the unique profile out of those. So yeah, they may spend. I mean, I know a couple of those cognac barrels that they had the big, the big, um, what do they call those? The big uh, boar's heads or pig's head, whatever the hell they call it. What he calls those things? Axolotl. Big, it's like eighty gallon barrels. Um, you know, it may have cost him sixty to eighty grand to bring it over, but you know, what if, was that? If you can run five five six seven wow. batches through it you can balance that out a lot and it actually does some great things um but you know i'm just curious on the on the age of that i can't wait to try them because i know some of their double oak stuff has they've gotten some awards for it here recently i think the uh wasn't it the the one in california because like the bordeaux barrel is what like 65 gallons something like that yeah yeah and the other one was bigger. It was like 80 or 85. That, well, they had a couple of Ambaranas that were big freaking like 80-gallon Ambaranas. I'm like, oh, yeah, don't. you get like three four uses out of that. <laughs> those are the good don't ones, Don't buy right? shit down the <laughs> toilet. <laughs> Have a bonfire and burn those barrels. Exactly, exactly. But They'll burn real quick. But that's the thing. I, I do feel like Starlight's been one of, those, one of those distilleries, at least in our region, that probably kind of led the charge on let's just jump into finishing. Because if you ever tried any of their stuff back when it was in the wine bottles, it wasn't that great. Well, and we gave them a they, lot of shade too. Like we did, we give Starlight a lot of shade, but you know, it, but it, they're good. There was no animosity towards no. that shade. It was just that they're killing the market with the finishes. Is you know, releasing too many too quickly. As and that like could they, be a thing. And they priced themselves out of it because you yeah. know, like we mentioned earlier, with a lot of the releases, it was it was all line out the door release on a Friday, and then all of a sudden it was sold out that day. It's yeah. not like that that's anymore. That's the difficult no. part about running a business that's uh, a profitable business is that you're going to want to see returns that it would otherwise indicate growth, you know? Right. And yeah, it, but five to six years, it was like that. Like, yeah. it, it trended up every year. I just feel like any distillery trying to get off and create a brand is eventually going to get to the point where they're – it's that Batman moment. Right. It's the Batman moment. You either but then they build a die second a hero still. or live to see yourself become a villain. <laughs> you know, it's like – Right. You just you, – you've got you've to continue putting out more stuff. You know? But yeah. that was what yeah. got them into the market was a lot of those finished stuff. They and then, did. And then they got the second still and, you know, expanded – their Rick House and you know it, just kept expanding their whole operation. Well, and they've so. won some awards on their straight rye and their straight bourbons now, so people are starting to see them around the country as a legitimate distillery. You know, they're no right. longer a small. Craft oh, they're distillery. way past the BlackBerry. You know what? Actually, come to, come to think of it, just because Kylie's been working tirelessly to create a lot of um, create a lot of benefit for this cause. I mean, she's she's been working really hard and. Uh, She's gotten so many cool things for their silent auction. I mean, it's insane. Uh, she got, uh, and I'll bounce back to what my crazy thought was, but I mean, I just feel like I didn't want to skip over what she's gotten. She got a company to donate a roof to the silent. Oh, auction. I saw that. That's awesome. A roof, like a. I mean, wow. So you then, win, you win that auction, and you get a new roof on your house. Yeah, and then also was it from the R &R? <laughs> No, it's not from Bone Dry either. Sorry, but I don't like your company. Um, <laughs> Bone dry. They wouldn't but, hire me either. No, so the, the company's, the company's out of Lafayette. It would be a special job, but um, it's from one of her friends that competed in the um, uh, Mrs. Indiana pageant that she did earlier this year. But okay. um, also, there's a chartered helicopter uh, ride around Indianapolis as well. Sounds that's, terrible. That's pretty, pretty awesome. But um, no, but no, I've been. I told Dan on the way over here. I actually have been going to that campus since I was a kid. My parents were big wine drinkers and big fans of inside Indiana, you know, wine trips down to Madison, down to yeah. Brown County yeah. and, uh, you know, down to, uh, West Baden down to that winery down there. So like I, I, 
unfortunately, due to no sitters and stuff like that, my brother and I just had to entertain ourselves while they were inside drinking wine. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So it's I've been bad. I've been to all these spots, but the best one was always when they said let's we're going to Huber. Yeah. The best one because they they would just give us a handful of quarters. We'd go out to the ponds and feed the koi fish and feed the ducks and everything like that. And just yeah, out, I got you know? wedding pictures doing that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> and, and again, Starlight's one of those places where you can go out there and you have a great meal. A lot of their food is farm to table in their restaurant. You have you have the whiskey, you have the brandies, you have the um, the wine, you have the the barn that has all their their baked goods. They got their coffee, brandies are everything. Really yeah, they're good. basically kind of like an Amish. They are. Amish without being honest because you're exactly they right. have they have the winery they've got the spirits but they also have cheeses they have they do uh bakery goods everything and then a ridiculous like cream, in, in, donuts. And in produce season when Indiana produce is thriving they have a ridiculous amount of fresh grown yeah. produce up there so like when you're out there and that's why I told Dan best time to go out there is really the fall yeah you, you get go out, out there, there and, and get see, the pumpkin patch yeah man. pumpkin yeah. patch you apple got everything orchards. going on it's a whole it's a whole thing out Ooh. there uh so I'm we really looking forward year. to it, but I will probably tomorrow. I'm just thinking about it because obviously they're not going to serve just uh, spirits. She's working on the wine, or sorry, working on the beer. She's also been working on the wine, and I, I kind of just said a long time ago, like, why don't I just get you a few cases of wine for them to serve at the event? So I might buy a few cases of wine while we're there tomorrow and just donate those for the gallery. Well, as I well. mean, maybe after we do the pick, we just ask them if we can do a tasting of the wines. You guys can pick the wines you want for the the thing, because I mean, they they can do that there. I think they're just, yeah, they were looking for a, a red choice and a white choice, and those will be just the two wines yeah. that they want. And um, that, yeah. and that's one of those things where, like, it might be good to have, like, a, a sweeter sweeter white and then a dry red. Yeah. And then that way you hit both palettes on that, too. Because yeah. I will tell you, I mean, I, I know you're probably not doing cigars at the release party. I don't even know if you can smoke on the outside of that place. But I will say red wine is fantastic with cigars. Where is the party at? It's at Biltwell. Oh, the Biltwell. So the yeah, gala, the gala itself. Yeah, the gala itself is at the Biltwell downtown, and it's 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 a great event. It's uh, I mean, food and everything. I mean, it's there's whole, outdoor seating around that the outdoor patio, but I don't know if they would it, allow smoking it's at always, their location. I will say it's always pretty freaking cold outside whenever they decide to do this. November but, though, man, we're going to be in sweatshirt season at that point in Indiana right now. I I'll gladly guy, join you guys out on the patio for a stick. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But well, look, we'll be there. We will this, be there. It, yeah, it's a great event. There's always like a really good like, uh, you know, it's like a multi course meal where they they bring in the courses, kind of like how uh, I don't know what was that N- Noble Oak oh, <laughs> in yeah. Fortville. You invited Ooh. me to that event in Fortville at uh, Fox Garden. Fox Garden. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that was fun. That. And it was like they, they would bring you out this course and then they'd shout take out to your Jake and the boys at Fox Garden. Shout, shout out. out, love those guys. So it'll be that type of setting, and then they'll have bars that you can, you know, obtain uh, the juice out there, there and uh, you can observe the silent auction items. I mean, there's this, there's always uh, one really good woodworker item that's in there where we we bought it last year. It was a, it was a beautiful wooden flag that's about yay big. Yeah, and uh, you know they they created the waves of the flag into yeah. it and colored it and everything and then they also inscripted mission 22 that's hung in our house and i i had to outbid this old lady really high to get it i think i had to pay like 1100 bucks for it yeah whatever. well that's and that's a good point you know you go out to these causes you believe in and if you think if it's a, a whiskey bottle release it didn't matter if it's a silent auction there's gonna be all kinds of crazy shit i mean hell my wife bid up um a tattoo for me, um, from a guy that actually did my tattoo before, he had, he donated four hours, and she bid it up to the cost of the of the tattoo, and I got that for part of my tattoo. Spe- speaking I, of, actually, Kylie did uh, consult a tattoo shop in Carmel. Nice. And they did donate like two or three uh, tattoos to to this. Perfect. As well. I'll be bidding on those. I need to keep I, working I on it. I could probably help you out with this. <clears throat> yeah. So you're doing a silent auction for this, right? Yeah. So. Let's do. Uh, we we could do something with Spencer Lee's. We we could do a dog package, maybe like a a coat, a collar, some treats, maybe. And then uh, with both our visuals, we could do like a production package. Uh, you know, video production yeah. or something. You know, a commercial shoot or whatever. So and, and not I got only a couple that, but you've already you. mentioned that you were going to probably donate some gift cards to here. Absolutely, and yeah. Dan, 
we talked about you actually donating like a, a an actual whiskey tasting. Yeah, I'm gonna do like a a, a big. I've done this for a few other events. Too, a chug but, event. Uh, a ch- chugathon. Come chug with Dan. <laughs> chug chug with Dan. <laughs> Sweet tea for everybody. <laughs> no, we're we're gonna do a because um, uh, I'll do like whiskey whiskey tasting. So we'll do like a whiskey tasting for ten or a shockathon. A shock. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll bring we'll, your fingers. We'll do we'll, we'll do like a like a whiskey a whiskey tasting um, for you know you and ten of your friends or whatever it is. And I'll well, bring uh, I will tell you for for any of you guys out there that are into bourbon clubs or just love bourbon or following us, whatever. It's always fun to do a tasting with someone that knows their shit because oh, yeah. they'll bring out like like Jack did for us on that one event we did. I know you've done this many times. The world of they're going to bring out. They're not going to just bring out you know. Here's a lineup of Jim Beam, and you can try their low shit to their high shit. No, it's always going to be like, this is something very unique you may never be able to try, and we want you to try it to get an experience of, this is an Irish whiskey that's off profile from Irish or whatever. And it's always fun to do that because it will expand your palate, and it will help you learn more about the industry and more about the actual bourbons you're tasting. So, I mean, I, I always recommend people, if you ever see some of those pop up, just jump on them, man. They're, they're always worth their weight in gold. Yeah, you're always going to get something that you've never heard of. That's, that's one thing right? I like to do. When I, every time I do a whiskey tasting, you know, I'll have your average whiskeys, and I always bring, like, a surprise. Some kind of a – something you've never had or something. Jeff the Creed, we did uh, six. Probably some kind of <laughs> – We'll start with the we'll first start with batch the bloody, bloody butcher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start you off on bloody butcher, and then yeah, and then and then we'll work our way up. Um, yeah, but it's well <laughs> to to hey, we'll we Pottsdale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we had Jackie's eye can out here for a sensory training, and oh, that was awesome. And oh, dude, we did the whole amazing. we did the whole training. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah, she pretty much just told us all we were full of shit. And, and honestly, we she about. was a hundred percent right, you yeah. know, on all that. But you know, at the end of the night, she's like, "Okay, I got a bottle of my, the, the last bottle of birthday bourbon that I actually was part of the process." Yeah, that she and helped. We, blend. we shared it, and you know what? It was a great experience. We got to try something that we'll never be able to see again, and but we got to hear the person that said, "This is why we did this, and this is the reasons why." It's so much fun to do that, man. So, speaking of birthday bourbon, what's your what are your thoughts on birthday bourbon? Uh, most of them I hate. Uh, I, exactly. I think I think most of them are very oh, no. overrated. Way overrated. For what they are. No. Well, yeah. it's like Old Forester in general, like 1924. Again, 1924 is great. It's twice the price it. of 1920, and 1920 yeah, is still better. Ever. But but 1924 is good if it was 50 bucks it's a bottle. It's so oaky. It's it is. But if you were buying that for 50 bucks a bottle, I'd be okay. If you're buying it for 50 bucks a bottle, also, so most of the on the on the old Forster birthday bourbons, um, I, w- I I wish they were higher proof. I want right more of a yeah. punch, more of a punch from. I want I want to love them for the MSRP. Punch on drunk it. love. And I can't, Adam Sandler's I, first I, movie. I like I like barrel picks. No, I it's can't. Not. I so we, we did um, we had I've had a ton of the old Forster birthday bourbons, and I Going have overboard. not found That's any that I've been just like. I'm abs- with you. Absolutely in love with. The price is way over much for. I've had what it is. so many old Forster. Single barrel barrel string picks that I have fallen in love with. Blew that shit out. Just nineteen blew, blew twenty. Nineteen ten. All the single ladies. Have you blew. ever? Yeah, all the single ladies. Still my favorite oh, barrel so pick good. of so theirs. Good. Elite Beverage did a hell of a job on that barrel pick. V and T batch one of theirs. Yep. Warehouse K. That one's amazing. So where, where oh, how, the K one was great. Where, for, where, wherever, Warehouse K. Just uh, for whatever reason, all the Something Warehouse special. K. And have, then wherever and, I got that one. That rootstock hospitality one or those, whatever those that warehouse so K was that the warehouse K com- and elite comfortably picked, numb. I think it was called right. Oh, that was good. Oh, so was really I've good. I've done we, the, the last uh, old Forester barrel strength pick we did. It was a unanimous. We had nine guys on the pick, and it was a unanimous decision. Just all nine. Yes, hey, this is this is the one. This is the one. This is one. Nine's still a good number. I know we talked about it's numbers a, it's earlier. A, it's but a big. It's a, uh, Chris Morris. It is. Chris Morris led us on the thing. Really, and he was the only one that was like, "Yeah, I didn't like this." And the only and he goes, "The only reason I didn't like this, not he, not that he didn't like it, but he goes, the only reason I I chose against it because he goes because it, this is the only one that's different from the regular old Forester yeah. profile, which is not a bad thing. I, I but, 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 but if you that. but if you have nine guys that are like. Yeah, it's that one, it's that one, one, it's that one, it's that one. And it was, it made the pick so easy because we're like, okay, how do we do this? Well, okay, that's I'm going to say that my favorite one was the Vine and Table one, Warehouse K. I just, I mean, that they they do some excellent picks. Sorry, back up. Why did I say VNT? It's not VNT. I always 
I always mix those up when I'm in Carmel, but Lenford. Market District. Market, Market District. District. Market yeah, yeah. District. Warehouse Lord, K Volume yeah. 1. They're I'm so sorry. Yeah. So good. RIP to Vine and Table. But no, I mean, no. I, so I always the, go the back. The one to in, uh, what was it, College Ave? Um, Big Red bought that place. Yeah. It's a bottle shop. Bottle or, shop, yeah. Yeah, bottle shop by Big Red is what it's called now. I haven't been in there yet. Have you been in there? I haven't. Are they, what are they doing? Just mainly barrel picks or what? Oh, I don't know. In a bottle I, shop. I, I think they were doing just, just regular. I think it was just regular bourbon, and they, they, were, they were throwing some of the other big red picks in there. I think that was the same thing with yeah. Vine and Table. Well, yeah, it was very similar. Yeah, they had yeah. bourbon world, and they were just doing picks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the other location was what? Fishers? Uh, where was the other Vine and Table? Vine and Table's in Carmel. It was downtown Carmel? in Carmel. It's always that's, been Carmel. That's that's where I did all my amazing. Oh, so it was Carmel and then College Ave, which was, but Vine like, and what, table was, that, Broad was a part of Big Red. They oh, okay. Were, yeah. Well, well, the other Vine one went table to an before Indian was by themselves. Then Big Red Bottom. Yeah, Big Red Bottom. Oh, okay. Joseph Davy was still working there, and then he left. Oh. And shortly and after sold those, shortly after he left, they sold it off, and now it's yeah. A Thai so College Ave is the bottle shop by Big Red or whatever it's called. The okay. other one is now an Indian restaurant. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I struggle so with like, a lot of North Side liquor stores up there. Yeah, that I struggle with them. I mean, I mean, Market District does a great job. They do a fantastic they've job. They've always got so many picks. That's the thing is, like, you go into Market District, you're probably going to see thirty to forty picks available almost every day. Yeah, I they still actually be... have right now. Their Elijah Craig barrel pick is still sitting right there. They still have. I don't know, probably seven or eight cases. It's probably and not no Lori. I mean, old, she though. she's got a hell of a palate. <laughs> she she usually has a great and, team. And Joe, yeah, Joe, Joe over there too. Okay. He's he's great. Uh, they have a lot of picks. They still got, you know, me me. I'm sitting there like a kid that's able to get his favorite food every single day or something mm-hmm. like that. I mean, I I'm become a little bit of a peerless snob lately, and uh, they still got their double oaked rye pick, and it's fantastic. It's just the the price point's too high, but. You know, I'll justify it when I when I finish a bottle. I'll go back and I'll. Well, I'll, the the people you know, who know again. Peerless know you're going to spend 120 bucks minimum. Yeah, and you're going to get into some special releases that are 160, 180. You know what? If you're a bourbon lover and you love Peerless, you don't have a problem with that. Yeah, it is a little it's high a for most one. people. It's yeah. not. It's not. You have to yeah. love whiskey. What's well, the same thing with BBC? Is that <laughs> it's it's not a beginner's. Wait, what's BBC? You want to talk about putting out is. too much stuff and too many variants? That's my my only beef with them is yeah. that I cannot keep anything straight that Bardstown puts out because. But then the Heritage line was the more just, affordable one. It's just yeah. so many products, and it's like, hey, have you had this one? And it was like, okay, yeah, no, I think I've got that one in my house. No, no, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about batch six. And exactly. It's like, you know, it's yeah. Like, that's. Well, but when BBC is in the same world as what Barrel is, Barrel uh, Craft Spirits BBC. are, they're all they're, yeah, exactly. they're they're both bringing their prices back down to an affordable level, which is good. Yeah. Um, but it also makes some people look at it and go, "Oh, what's wrong? What? Why are you bringing you your prices down?" Anything? It's like yeah. it, it's a double again? whammy. It was like the Blender series or something like that, or what was like it was like uh, a for what the 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 original one? It had like a metal. Metal top, like a brass top oh, cork on remember. it or something. I've got well, because like one. the first line was Fusion like one sixty Fusion, Fusion. Fusion, Fusion, and that was forty nine to sixty. Yeah. Those were pretty MSRP. Good. Yeah, but you know, like when Bardstown first started coming around, like their first release was like one forty nine MSRP, and it's like that's one of those like I just can't I can't justify trying that for the first time without like either going to do a tasting or, like, somebody giving me a pour of that to try. Like, I drop that much at Peerless every single time. I would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's... <laughs> yeah, but, but you're also point, a like, Peerless, Peerless lover. You're going to do that. Well, but, okay, you're, 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 like, you're invested. Same way. Yeah, you're invested in the Peerless. I am invested, but, like, I'll just say that it didn't disappoint. When I was there no. last, when I, I went out there, what, two months ago or something like that, and we, uh, Waddell he brought us in. He treated us like family, brought us back right away. He let us sample, like, I mean, over a dozen things. And I walked out of there with all these ones that they don't sell here in Indiana because we only carry the basic skew in Indiana. Right, right. Yeah. But I walked out of there with, I got the high rye bourbon. Epic. I love it. I brought it over to your house yesterday. It's good. It's amazing. Very good. Um, They had a, I just so happened to be there. They had a special single barrel bourbon that was, uh, it was a special one they were releasing for the Derby for African American jockeys. It yep, was like a special yep. one. That one was amazing. Um, they had a particular small batch that was epic, and he—I don't remember what the story he told, but he sold me on it, and it is different from your typical small batch. Did you ever try the absinthe barrel? 
That's what. So I asked him <laughs> specifically because I mentioned that it's you know so good. I mentioned Eric, I mentioned you, and he he left for like ten minutes. He came back with a little plastic bottle. That's Not what even, he did with me it, too. <laughs> it wasn't even. It wasn't even uh, in a five a, gallon. He bucket. didn't have any variants that were still left of it in an actual glass bottle. He brought it. I tried it, and I was like, "Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> it's literally just like a hint of licorice." It it's is amazing. so good. Yeah. One of the best yep. ones I had was the Trifesta bottle from them. Uh, it was one that was the uh, Bourbon Fest, Bourbon and Beyond, and then Louder Than Life. And that was like, they had a Trifesta series. And like Peerless had one, Four Roses had one. Oh, what was the other one? Woodford, I don't remember the Woodford other one. Woodford there was, uh, Yeah, Woodford. Yeah. And they had all the, like this series for all the festivals in Louisville. And that it was so good. Yeah. I, I don't have any more of that because... What else she I drink it. You know, my wife told her. me not to open it, but gin's a lush. I drink she it all. Drinks all that shit. Then, oh, God. I think the only other ones I came home with because I, I I doubled up because I was like I don't know the next time I'm going to be here, so I, I bought yeah. two of everything. So I was I walked away bleeding, but with like a like a dumb smile on my face. Or I will say <laughs> that's a pro move. If you if you go to a distillery and you try something and you're like oh I love that buy two yeah it might 100%. be a little bit of it might hit, hurt your wallet a bit. Get two because you can throw one on the shelf. You can crack one. You can share that one with your buddies. And then when you get to the last bottle, you can baby the hell out of yeah, you. All you want is going to hurt you a lot of the times, but they yeah, do. But well, man, it's good yeah. stuff. You, got, yeah. you had like less well, than that's an why inch. the last yeah. one I had yeah. had less than an inch. Oh, I was very sparing. Yeah. Don't worry. You, he was he was so impressed with my less than an inch that it was. That's it, what she said. I know. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike gets that every weekend, man. Uh, but no, I left. I left also with just their regular uh, double oak dry. I left with their double oak bourbon and then they had this other one that was a, a single barrel rye that was called the leaker and that one was really good i mean I'm i've I've, lie. I've downed the first bottle and i am afraid to open up the other one because no. i don't want to go through it so that one's you the will. one that had they had issues with the barrel yeah um we tried that when we were down there and you're right it was freaking f- fantastic yeah. I will say, man, I mean, he does a great job of doing tastings because he'll bring shout 20 out to John. Bo- yeah, 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 shout 20, out John. 20 different barrel or He's bottles out, and you try all. Oh, yeah, he is. That's right. Do you need a wedding photographer? <laughs> Mike's got you. Mike only has like 14 businesses, so it's all yeah, good. But I never work. But never he does work. a great job. He yeah. does a fantastic job. He does. Waddle. Waddle. His name? Yeah. Waddell. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And and also his he he's got he's got the fit nabbed down to a point. There's, there's nobody else in Louisville that's repping the swag like he's got. True. I, my favorite hat is his. Uh, it's clearly like just a touch of Hank Williams Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yep. It's perfect. Well, cool, man. So what else do we have to go here? Oh man, nothing. I don't know what else you got. You got anything else, Dan? No, <laughs> need some more Triathlon whiskey. Triathlon coming up. I'll take some more. Yeah, how's your liver feel? Fantastic. Oh, it's great. It's primed and ready to go. Yeah, we got nothing else, man. Let's let's close this out, Rob. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure I don't have any more. Uh... No, all our notes we've already touched on. It's uh, everyone else's. Fault the only one the thing. So killed it. so again, we said August third, Heaven Hill release party here at Final Third. Get out here for that. That's going to be an amazing day. They're bringing out food trucks. We're going to have an amazing day that day. Uh, August the 7th, we have a Drew Estate Cut and Light event. So we're going to have Ben out here. We're going to be smoking Drew Estate cigars that, that night. All the discounts for your event discounts that night. Absolutely. So come out and do, for that too. Where can they find you guys on Instagram and Facebook or wherever you guys like to be found? Heavy Bourbon on uh, Instagram. The Heavy Bourbon on TikTok. HeavyBourbon.com. Okay. All of it. God, I don't even have a .com. Uh, just Whiskey Ben Tindy. Whiskey Bit Indy. All right. Find me everywhere. Underscores on. in between. Nice. Uh, final third cigar for everything here. And Mike? Yeah, you can find me at Spencer Lee's. Both are visuals. And don't forget to follow the Final Third Podcast on Smash Instagram. Smash that like, baby. Smash that like. Yes. Smash the subscribe. I yeah. really said I wasn't going to say that. You have I no idea how much it you say it every time. week now. I yes. say it every week. Yes. Please subscribe. Yeah. It Thank you guys so my much. Family. We appreciate you guys, and fuck you, Jobu. Fuck you, Jobu. Fuck you, Jobu. <laughs>